Here we are, Tuesday, July 5th, 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Dr. Jerome Corsi, best-selling author and researcher, will be joining us to discuss the shocking developments, which really aren't too shocking when you realize how corrupt this out-of-control bureaucracy and government is and foreign interests that have hijacked the nation. He'll be discussing with us what just happened about 45 minutes ago or less. So that is the FBI director, Mr. Kumi coming out and saying there will not be any indictment. We're also going to have Roger Stone joining us with huge breaking news and uh, Trump information. And we are also going to have a roundtable discussion with Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, and David Knight and myself uh, from two of our studios uh, here in Central Texas. But make no mistake, what you've seen happen is another signpost showing how deep we've gone down the rat hole. And this is really an arrogant declaration of independence against the rule of law. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsible decisions also consider the context of a person's actions and how similar situations have been handled in the past. In looking back at our investigations into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. General Petraeus and countless other cases. Here's the difference. When Colin Powell in 1991, 1992, right up until about you know, 93 or so, when they left office, was doing this. Email was brand new, even in the executive branch of the government. It's been around for decades in scientific circles. But it was a new thing. The rules and laws were developed after that. And by the 2008 to 9 10s, they knew exactly what they were doing. That's why she was ordering them to cut the headers off of classified material. And she knew her servers were compromised. I guarantee you what this is, is them selling data. It's a drop box. And then she could just plausibly say, oh, I didn't know anybody was getting in there. It's better than going to the park and putting the briefcase, you know, under the, under the park bench, as countless spies have been caught doing or, or, or leaving it in their trash. And then the spies come by and get it. She can try to, de uh, to deny what's happened. And it's Lynch meeting in secret with Clinton on the plane last week. And things like that that really show the criminal intent. And there's clear charges that she's lied to federal officers. There's clear evidence that uh, she has tried to deceive Congress. And the FBI director is clearly compromised and is clearly moving this country towards light speed dictatorship because the sky's the limit. Imagine if you're Hillary Clinton right now, what's going through your mind? That you can get away with anything. Now, in an earlier part of the press conference, he built up the criminal negligence. He, he built up how horrible it was. And, and a, quote, strong slap on the wrist is what CNN said. A strong slap on the wrist? Maybe if her constituents cared. But they love criminality by their own party. They, they love foreign interest in the Saudis giving her $100 million in, in, in Gulf states. They don't care if they're throwing gays off buildings and chopping their heads off. It's not about that. It's about virtue signaling to each other that they're trendy and they're good and they care. The truth is they're a bunch of pirates that want to loot the middle class further and want more free goodies. And Hillary is promising her minions she will do that. Now, if uh, the way Barack Obama treated black Americans... Less visits to uh, inner city areas, funding to actual programs that were helping inner city people uh, being cut. Black unemployment roughly doubling. And more than doubling the average unemployment growth that we saw here in the United States. So it's truly sickening. We've got that clip coming up and a lot more. It's a big broadcast today. We're also going to open the phones up so you can sound off and give us your take on the situation. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Crooked Hillary above the law. They've been running the clock on us. We've been hearing for a year that Comey is a tough guy and is going to indict Hillary. Because after all they have to, look what they did to Petraeus for far less. It's not just her engaged in espionage, putting... 
classified material on a server and then foreign donors giving her money to her foundation. That's what it was, was a drop box in my educated, researched view. The bottom line is she knew what she was doing. So regardless, it's espionage. Where are the espionage charges? Forget violating uh, you know, the National Security Act or whatever. Forget violating a secrecy act with secret documents. That's bad enough. It's nothing compared to the willful intent of knowing you're on a compromised server. And then lying to the public and saying she didn't have the server. Or saying she didn't know it had been hacked. Or saying it never had been hacked. Just a few months ago, our reporters talked to her on the campaign trail. She was still saying her servers weren't hacked when everyone knew a year ago they were. And now the FBI directors come out and said they were hacked. It was very frustrating watching the press conference because he says all the horrible things she's done. Or he says a lot of it. And then he just says, by the way, we're not going to indict because... No reasonable prosecutor could prosecute her with this information. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the lying to federal officers, the lying to Congress, changing her story so many times, it makes my head spin. You have her right there. And then you've got her getting money from third world dictators to then take restrictions off the State Department for technology and weapons transfers. That's a whole separate area. And the missile secrets in the 90s, the communist Chinese, on and on and on. Roger Stone's coming on about it today. We're going to repost the top of Infowars.com, story he wrote for us exclusively for July 4th, uh, that, that gets into reminding folks the documented technology, the entire system, the miniaturization systems, the reentry systems, the multiple warhead targeting systems, the MERV technology, uh, the first stage boost technology, the second stage boost technology, the reentry technology, the GPS systems, everything, the entire shop of ICBM technology developed here in the United States. Second to none, the German technology we hadn't developed by the 60s is better than what the Russians have today, but all the designs were accidentally destroyed to a whole group of rockets, not just the Saturn series. And, and I don't want to digress, but this is the deliberate sabotage of this country. By the way, the Russians have the best super heavy boosters, but in a bunch of other classes, the United States had better ones. And the point is, is that we have to go to Russia now to get our boosters. And then what was left of our technology was given to the communist Chinese. I mean, this is just the most flagrant, over-the-top, ridiculous treason you could imagine. But I'm digressing. Today, I want to talk about the crimes of Hillary Clinton. Because of the court of public opinion, they may think they're above the law and declared independence against the people and, and, and against rule of law. But let me tell you something. You can't stop the court of public opinion. And you can't stop the American people across the board realizing that under this globalist economic system, we're being screwed over. And Obama was used as the leftist front to get that globalist corporatist agenda through. And now they're going to have the, the ridiculous stunt of a woman with her female running mate, is the word. And that half her cabinet will be women. This is a total stunt gimmick. <sighs> Absolute, complete gimmick. And so we're going to get to hear that we're against women now because we're against this crime boss, Hillary Clinton. And she stole the nomination openly from Bernie Sanders, openly. And of course, he rolled over. And just everything's being given to her because she is so incredibly compromised. And now there's new reports out. Huma, Hillary flouted protocol, used burn bags to destroy documents prohibited by federal regulations and laws. Abedin also admitted to being aware of her obligation to delete federal records or destroy federal records. Again, aware of her obligation not to delete federal records, not to delete federal records or destroy federal records. So they're all admitting that they broke the law now and saying that they were ordered to do this by Hillary. And it's like, it's okay. As long as you all say she ordered you to do it, she's above the law, so everybody gets a pass. So there's the headline. FBI recommends no charges against Clinton in email probe. I had Dan Bongino, senior retired Secret Service agent, 
And he's like, no, no, they're going to indict her. That's the word. No, they're not. Because we have the word directly from the highest levels. And we told you here last week that she would not be indicted with Larry Nichols and with others. And Trump, you notice, came out a day before anybody else did and said, the word is no indictment for crooked Hillary. Because don't think for a minute the average FBI agent and even senior people are not completely freaked out by this. This woman is completely, absolutely a, a total megalomaniac. In fact, I took an image of her today that really shows her evil, and I tweeted it out at Real Alex Jones. At, at least I was getting ready to when we were about to go live. I asked Don to do it. He's probably already done it. Hey, can you guys go to my Twitter for TV viewers? I want to show folks the tweet I put out. And then I'm going to go to Trump's tweet and just read through these. And, and, and just imagine having this guy as president versus Hillary, who CNN had up there in a white outfit like she was a goddess and then flared the, the iris up where she burns like a god. And they said, golden god. This is, this is who the power structure wants. And because she will be like a god politically, when all these criminals get behind her and make her above the law, she can do anything she wants. And she said what that is. Start a bunch of wars, jack up taxes, come after our guns, go after better clingers. It's on. Let's go back to my Twitter, please. Real Alex Jones. Very evil image of Hillary. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Scroll back down. There you go. Look at that look on her face. If you're a radio listener, go to Real Alex Jones. By the way, it's come out that, you know, Hillary has 90 some percent fake Twitter followers and so does Obama and so does Michelle Obama. We don't have any fake followers. We don't want fake followers. I could go out and buy 10 million followers for like $20,000. And most of them aren't even real people and then say how big I am on Twitter. Our 3 million people that follow us on Facebook, real. 400,000 people that follow us on Twitter, all together it's about a million, real. But, if you need, but you do need to follow us there because we were kind of late to the game getting into Twitter years ago. And it's important to be able to stay in contact with you on more platforms. But, but, but going back to the image that says it all, there's certainly a Ben Garrison image that says I'm with her, the Grim Reaper, showing all the different wars she started and lied about. And then I, I, I see some leftists going, oh, but it was okay when George Bush did it. No, we were against that. The difference is Bush didn't actually openly aid ISIS and al-Qaeda to go in and overthrow Christian countries and our allies like Egypt or double-cross Gaddafi and set him up or, or double-cross Assad to try to put ISIS in that's, let's be conservative, 50 times worse than Assad. Overthrowing our 30-plus-year allies who were pro-Western and had brought real stability to Egypt, they overthrew them and they blew up more than 300 churches and killed over 100,000 Christians. And the Egyptian military said, why are you backing ISIS and Al-Qaeda? Before it was even known as ISIS. That's what our government did. That's who Hillary's behind. That's who she works with. That's who these people are. They are out to get us, folks. They're not playing games. They're bizarre. And Hillary's promising to go to the center if she gets elected. Bull. She is never going to stop. She is going to go for total broke once she's in office. And this is America's make it or break it time. And I'm here to tell you. Everybody is going to rue the day that we didn't stop Hillary Clinton. I don't enjoy going up against a crime boss like her. I don't enjoy actually mobilizing people nationwide in something that is, at my level, a very dangerous exercise. I'm a father of three. But I'm here to tell you, my children have no future in the long term if we don't turn this around, so I'm all in. And I know you're all in as well. And believe me, Bill Clinton looks like he's about to die any minute. Hillary Clinton looks completely mentally ill. Even if she gets into office, though, I think she'll end up collapsing or going insane or something, because she's definitely mentally ill. She's definitely on drugs. She's definitely burnt out. So... So, so don't worry. God works in mysterious ways. We've just got to do the right thing, and God will carry us the rest of the way with providence. Because there's a lot of awakening happening right now. And who knows? They may bring Hillary in, and then the global collapse happens, and you know, world government gets in more trouble. Look at the British exit and, and what's happening with 30 nations wanting to leave the euro right now. So you know what? We just got to move forward, do the right thing. Justice be done. May the heavens fall. Now, I'm going to open the phones up. And I want first-time callers in the first round to be able to speak specifically to the non-indictment and where you think this is going. Do you think there'll be other in, talk of other indictments? I think this shows the sky's the limit for the establishment. 
I think the show's a blank check, a declaration of independence against due process. But I want to know a declaration of independence against justice, a, a declaration of independence by the criminals on July 4th against the American people. That's what this is all about. 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And we'll get you up and on the air. What do you think the next shoe to drop will be? But let's go out to break with Crooked Hillary. This is the FBI director, recommends no charges. Here it is. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsible decisions also consider the context of a person's actions and how similar situations have been handled. All right, that's in enough. The past. Let's go to break. In similar situations, they've indicted people. And what you have done here, a little bit of a Freudian slip there, is they set a precedent now where prosecutors are going to say, oh, you got thousands of documents foreign governments are accessing, every one of them is a felony. That's okay. So the world really is divided into two different groups of people those that are informed and those that are uninformed. And there are some people that are informed that are trying to build a free, open society. There are other people that are informed that are feeding on the groups that are not aware of what's happening. And it is the arrogance, it is the uh, fact that so many ignorant people are willfully ignorant and like to be ignorant, that really is our downfall overall. And there's videos up on Infowars.com where the majority of Americans out on the street in California think the United States is uh, 2016 years old. They believe that years go forward uh, from that point, uh, not the birth and death of Christ. Uh, we have videos, uh, 4th of July, where people don't know how many stars are on the American flag, and they don't know why. And they don't know why they celebrate it. And, and, and understand something, we don't put these videos out with our correspondent, uh, Mark Dice, at Infowars.com, because we want to feel elitist about this. Drudge doesn't link to them because of that. It's not, oh, look at these morons, let's laugh at them like jaywalking and celebrating the ignorance. I don't even think Jay Leno was celebrating the ignorance. He was pointing out how scary. In fact, he said that before. It was, they were so stupid. And, and that's who Hillary is pitching things to, saying, don't be racist, vote for me. Do you have any idea how racist Hillary Clinton is against the human race? She's a psychopath. That means you're the opposite of a philanthropist. A philanthropist, in its base term, means a fan of humanity. The globalists are not fans of humanity. And Hillary is not a fan. But she virtue signals all day long and tells you she's a fan. But look at her charitable records. They're almost zero. Joe Biden's, Obama. Look at the studies from Europe, Canada, the U.S., Australia. Leftist are the most stingy, hateful people you will ever find. Because they're criminal minds. They're mentally ill. They want to be in charge. And they want you to think that they're virtuous like you are and that they're so virtuous you should be guilty and then humbly follow their orders they're bullies i was talking to a um, doctor of psychology yesterday who got out of it because it's so corrupt and he was already successful in other businesses and he just said no it's 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 totally now claiming someone's been a bully so you can reverse roles and be a bully against them but feel good about yourself. And that's what they do. And that's why Trump being aggressive and, and confident in these criminals' faces is the only way to go because we need confidence in this country and this world to stand up against the thugs. And if you don't know that in Europe and the United States and other areas, the left are a bunch of thugs. Absolutely, there's right-wing thugs and right-wing corruption because the same globalists are manipulating both political systems towards the same authoritarian end. It's just with the left, they're able to go so incredibly far because it's a cult. The constituents of the mindset just lazily want to feel good about themselves, decide they're the good guys, and everybody else outside of that is the bad guys. They're the most insular, 
believe what they want to believe, ignorant group of people you can imagine. I mean, I really try to disprove my ideas. I really try to talk to other groups, and I really try to understand things, and I really am open-minded. I'm a libertarian. I'm a real liberal, and I'm very offended by the modern fascistic left. I, I, I really am. And I just wonder how bad it's going to get in the next administration because I thought Bush was bad. Boy, I thought he was bad. And then a, 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 every real liberal out there, whether it be somebody like, again, a Jonathan Turley, constitutional lawyer, or whether it be somebody like Camille Paglia, I mean, countless others say, oh, no, you know, the head of the Green Party. Oh, yeah, um, Obama's three to ten times, depending on who you hear from, three to ten times worse than Bush. And they have metrics and studies showing this, you know. Turley said he was three times worse like five, six years ago. Three times worse. That's a conservative estimate. Three times worse for, against the press and against whistleblowers and against the economy and crony deals and big corporations giving money and then the government shuts down their competition as the country falls apart. I'm going to go to break. I'm going to come back and play the clip where the FBI director goes through all the bad things Hillary did but said there's no evidence. Play a few other clips talking about how her server was hacked. And then we're going to go right to your phone calls. Jerry, Nick, Brady, Robert, Kenneth, and many others. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. By the way, people see the urgency. They understand uh, what's going on, and, and they responded. So thank you for the support. Thank you for supporting yourselves. Big success with the July 4th mega sale on all the different preparedness items from storable foods to Survival Shield a X2 nascent iodine to... Heirloom seeds, the water filtrations, you name it, 20, 40% off. I'm extending that right through the week. The independence sale. They're on the march. Info the empire's on the run. InfoWarsStore.com. Alex. And nowhere in the news did they say that it was Islamic terror. Most places didn't even say ISIS. They report that Istanbul, formerly Constantinople, basically has no tourists there now. And no one ever says it's Islam. It's Islam on a giant jihad march worldwide. When you look at what's happening in Europe, I've got stacks of news articles here. Mainstream news where they admit multi-thousand percent increases in rapes in Germany, Sweden, France, and other areas. And the police on record are ordered to cover up that it's Islamic. Almost all of it. Then they have Swedish ministers come out, I have an article here, and say it's the fault of the Swedes that, 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 that when the Muslims do it, it's not really a big deal. It's bad when Swedes do it, even though Swedes basically don't rape. Leftist politician, it's worse when Swedish men rape women than when migrants do. See, that's the upside down world. Where, oh, we have a multi-thousand percent rape epidemic, the capital of rape now in Europe. Oh, let's just blame the Swedes. Remember the Green Party came out and blamed German women? And the mayor of Cologne blamed the German women? Well, you shouldn't look so sexy, sweetheart. Swedish women now, the police hand out bracelets that say in Swedish, don't touch me. You can't make this stuff up. And they are, oh, oh, oh in the Idaho case the, uh, of the little girl that supposedly got sexually assaulted, the police have come out basically under orders from the city council and said, well, we were told to keep all this secret, but there was an assault. It was sexual, but it wasn't rape. And there were three teenagers or, or, uh, involved or led by one teenager and, and most of it's true, but the Washington Post said InfoWars is discredited because we linked to a story that basically turned out to be accurate. Idaho refugee rape. Obama justice official threatens Americans who criticize migrant programs. Yeah, they're now saying it's hate speech to say that a lot of these folks are rapists. That's the culture. An unintended woman is fair game. And if a woman can be raped, then they get charged with the rape, not the man. This is the upside-down sicko world. And they had the Washington Post and others over the weekend, countless articles saying that we are the, that, 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 that we created the story and that we were wrong. But then when you read the article, it admits that we were right. But we didn't create the story. 
20 girls molested in new Cologne-style attacks in Swedish Rockfest. That's a new one from Friday. That's RT reporting that. They'll probably have the Washington Post say it's my fault, too. They'll just say it's not true when it is and then say I said it when I didn't. I'm looking at Drudge, Syrian refugee, right little girl at Knife Point, in Idaho. All false. And that's the police chief. Then it goes into blaming Drudge, goes into blaming Infowars. Because they go, oh, they were from Iraq and Sudan. But that's what they call all the refugees now is Syrian. They are refugees. They were brought in. They were brought in by the feds, and then you call them Syrian. We're the ones that explain that almost none of them are Syrian. They've been letting less than 1% Christians in when Syria is 20% Christian. Now there's a new statistics out that, well, some of the newer groups, 3% they're letting in because of pressure. So see, that's how the media works. They put the lies out. We expose them, they double back to their own lies like a dog going to its vomit and then say that we're wrong because they're refugees, Muslim refugees from North Africa, Northeast Africa, and Iraq. That's, it, that, that's why they got jihadis of every color and shape and white, black, Asian, Arab pouring into Syria because it was a partially industrialized nation with a lot of farms, a lot of... A lot of production, a lot of good people, because there's obviously a lot of Christians there. It's mainly a crypto nation, crypto Christian. You know, they claim it's 20 something percent, but it's more like 50 percent was really Christian. They've been secretly operating as, as Christians while the country's been more prosperous. Uh, everyone's not running around killing each other for fun because they want to steal their property. And so now it is a burgeoning, growing country until this whole invasion began. And then now that the Syrians have been beating them, they got out the Jihadis can't go back to their home countries. Saudi Arabia won't take them. Sudan won't take them. No. So they go through Turkey and Urgun and come to Europe. But I'm going to stop there and go to your phone calls. Vermont town debates welcome for 100 Syrians as Trump pushes ban. And by the way, that's Bloomberg. When you hear there's 100 coming to your town, Ten times that. That's been the metric in Europe and here. I'm going to explain this very, very slowly. They also claim that we claim in the Washington Post that the numbers are much higher. They did the same thing in Europe where they'd say it was 100,000 a year when it was over a million a year. And Obama claims it's under 100,000 when, ladies and gentlemen, it's tens of thousands in Austin, Texas alone. Hundreds per school this year. Over 230 in one year to the high school I graduated from in Northwest Hills, a smaller high school. I called other high schools, so did my other reporters. Every high school is jam-packed with Syrian refugees. They're not Syrians, most of them. And most of the refugees aren't children. Most of them are military-age men. So if my high school of something like 1,500 students just added almost 200, it was 232, I think, they just added that. Imagine how big these numbers are, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the numbers are staggering. And our government, I didn't mean to digress into this, has got our borders wide open. We have seen terror attacks in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Central Asia, killing close to 1,000 people since last Friday. And you don't hear anything of, uh, except, oh, we're going to take more of your rights away and have more airport security and track Americans. How about you just don't bring more of these people in? They don't live with each other in peace. It's not like we're bringing in Iraqi physicist professors. It's not like we're bringing in, uh, you know, a uh, Persian uh, scientist or something to go to our universities or to be professors. Sure, you can bring folks over that are leaving that and don't want to be part of it and have denounced it. Bring the Christians, bring the real political dissidents, bring the Muslim heretics in who don't want to be under radical Islam. Bring reformers in. But do not bring the foaming at the mouth loons. There's a new video today on Infowars.com of two visually impaired people trying to get a cab and they won't let them in. And if you live in London, most of the cab drivers now are Muslim. And they work in these groups. I experienced it last time I was in England where they wouldn't take us to the airport that was three miles away. And I went down the cab queue of like 20 Muslims 
and none of them would take me. And then a British old guy pulls up and he goes, he goes, yeah, they do that. They all work together. And you can't say anything or they call you or you get called racist. And they were demanding 50 pounds to take me like three miles to the Hyatt. And we're just refusing. They said, no, we only go to London. And they just hated us so much. It was just, and finally, after I sat there, and I even got it on video, I never put it out. I finally, a, a British guy pulls up and he goes, no, they're not supposed to do that. You know, it's the law. They're supposed to take you wherever you want. That's why they pull up here at the airport, but they gouge everybody. And he goes, where are you going? And I said, the Hyatt, three miles away. And he goes, that'll be six pounds. That's like $10. I got in, gave the guy a tip of like 10 extra pounds. And he apologizes, an old guy out loading our bags out and he goes, it's kind of sad, you know, but it just gets worse. But I'll try to say something about it, but they sure give everybody a hard time. It's not like things used to be here in England. One old English guy, folks, gave me the service and drove me, because that's how he wants to be treated. He don't want to be there and screwed over, but I know I'm a Kaffir. I know I'm an outsider. I'm a nobody. I, I'm a subhuman. I deserve to pay you 50 pounds to go three miles. What is that, overcharging me 10 times? I deserve to be charged 10 times over by guys wearing freaking pajamas. Because I'm a white guy. But I saw him doing it to Asians, other people. If you weren't a Muslim, you were a dumbass. And they were all going to sit there and screw you over together. And I've talked to Joe Biggs and others that have been in heavy combat all over, and they say the Muslims weren't like that even in Iraq and places. It's who they're bringing in, folks. They're bringing in vetting, just like the father-in-law or the brother-in-law of the guy at the nightclub, in, at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. He's running a major refugee operation. His dad went to the White House, all this stuff. They're bringing jihadis in. That's why they act like this. And I'll tell you, it is giving. Because I've talked to the experts. It's giving regular Muslims a bad name. You can argue all Islam is radical, its orthodox version is like this, but this is who Hillary's bringing in. This is who she's allied with. This is what she's up to. And I'm going to go to your calls. I apologize. Let me play the Kumi clip because I talked about it. Uh, I already played the clip where he says no charges for her. We should probably play that just one more time. It's about 20 seconds long. Then I'm going to play FBI director uh, gets into uh, criminal neglect, but, 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 but then turns around, though, and says no prosecutor would go after her. That is the biggest lie I've ever seen. Here's the uh, no indictment clip. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsible decisions also consider the context of a person's actions and how similar situations have been handled in the past. In looking back at our investigations into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. Wow, that sets an incredible precedent right there. Total declaration of independence that they're above the law. Let's go to the next clip. It's about two minutes long and I'm going right to Jerry and others. Uh, this is uh, where he lays out, though, what she did. It's far worse than this, but let me tell you, this is not criminal neglect. This is conscious, lying to Congress, lying to the FBI, cutting the tops off the secret uh, documents, ordering her staff to engage in crimes. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like the cops pull up the bank and the bank robbers are walking out with the bags of money in their hands. And there's surveillance footage of them screaming, saying, get on the floor, or I'll kill you. I mean, it's open, it's shut. I'll tell you what's open and shut now that these people are given a green light to go crazy. And then what do you do when you have a lawless government ruling over you? <laughs> well, you're smart about it. You don't let them start a civil war so that the resistance is just against the general government itself that's as disgusted as anybody else is. But you got to navigate that, be as wise as a, what is it, wise as a serpent and peaceful as a dove. But at some point, you know, this thing turns into 70, 1776 because they're going to push it. They're going to offensively come for our guns. That's what kicked it all off in 1775 at Lexington and Concord. That Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. For example, 
Seven email chains concern matters that were classified at the top secret special access program at the time they were sent and received. Those chains involve Secretary Clinton both sending emails about those matters and receiving emails about those same matters. There is evidence to support a conclusion that any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in the position of those with whom she was corresponding about those matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. In addition to this highly sensitive information, we also found information that was properly classified as secret by the U.S. intelligence community at the time it was discussed on email. That is excluding any later up-classified emails. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system, but their presence is especially concerning because all of these emails were housed on unclassified personal servers, not even supported by full-time security staff, like those found at agencies and departments of the United States government, or even with a commercial email service like Gmail. I think it's also important to say something about the marking of classified information. Only a very small number of the emails here containing classified information bore markings that indicated the presence of classified information. But even if information is not marked classified in an email, Participants who know or should know that the subject matter is classified are still obligated to protect it. And while not the focus of our investigation, we also developed evidence that the security culture of the State Department, in general and with respect to the use of unclassified systems in particular, was generally lacking in the kind of care for classified information. All right, let's stop right there. I'm going to go to your phone calls. Uh, here's the deal. He called it a year ago, Larry Nichols, former Clinton insider. He said that they were having the media push the email thing because they knew how it would end in the end. And that would be a distraction from all the other incredible corruption, the missile secrets, the rapes, uh, you know, Obama and, 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 and Hillary and the persecution of Christians. But imagine with everything we've seen what they're going to do now. It's a big question to ask because this is truly some of the most open, brazen, above the law declaration of tyranny I've ever seen. Let's go to Jerry. Jerry from Washington. You're on the air. Go ahead, Jerry. Hey, thanks, Alex. Um, I appreciate your show very much. I've been listening for uh, for about five years. Um, I'm I'm a government contractor, and I've been working for uh, five years. And we have training that we have to do four times a year. And in that training list is information protection. <clears throat> the first thing they cover is you cannot store any government information on any cell phones, any other emails. Uh, you can't send it to your private email. You can't send it to somebody else's private email unless, they, unless that email is a business that we are doing business with. Um, this, this, is, this is a choice. Um, this is something you, you, when, when I just heard um, the first clip you played and the second clip you played, and they're talking about whether it's confidential, whether it's classified information, whatever it is, that's a bunch of bull, okay? Because you have to save every bit of government information. Sure, it's all compartmentalized, sometimes not even wired into the Internet as it gets more classified. And the fact is she met, Lynch met with Clinton knowing it was illegal last week. They're, that's what I'm saying. They're doing this all on purpose to just set the precedent that they're above the law. That, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is a choice because she knew better. She has to take that training. Everybody has to take that training. And the thing of it is, is she knew you can't delete even what you can't. The only kind of email you can delete is if somebody says they're having a retirement party, something like that. That's the only kind of email you can delete. You can't you cannot you have to store all all government business documents on their server. Absolutely. And then she knew it was compromised by foreign governments. It's espionage, folks. Thank you, Jerry. Look, it's like Benghazi. For 13 hours plus, they sit there and watch the stand down take place. For eight hours, they watch the firefight go on. Everybody who is in the military and understands how that works, or the thousands that saw it on the Predator drone feeds, or the thousands that have since seen the recordings of those feeds, know there was a stand down. We have the witnesses who received the stand down. So we know they're lying. 
just like we know about the servers. She first said she didn't have separate servers and didn't have separate emails. Remember the head of the Environmental Protection Agency had to resign a few years ago because she had secret emails? They operate outside of government oversight and citizen oversight with these systems. But with Hillary, it goes far further. She knew foreign governments had penetrated. She knew they were getting that data. Now, unless it was some super secret program to feed them disinfo or something, like the Enigma machines or whatever, we know it is espionage. But the fact that they've brought all this out in front of everyone just shows it's just what Larry Nichols said. It's meant to break our will. It's not breaking my will. I'm going to uh, Robert in Tennessee and others here in a moment. I'm not going to belabor this, but we are extending the July 4th Independence Day specials. We are extending those right through this week uh, because folks have really been taking advantage of it. 20 to 40 percent off all of the super high quality storable foods uh, at InfoWarsSelect.com or InfoWarsStore.com. 20% off all Alexa Pure water filters, 20% off all Alexa Pure air filters, 20% off Survival Shield Mason Iodine X2. We are extending this, and folks, uh, it's now time to get prepared. It's now time to get ready with all the global upheaval, you name it. The globalists are instituting economic situations. They're instituting wars. They want to make us dependent on them. It is a no-brainer that we all get prepared and we all get ready. We're going to fly Hillary for President banners over the RNC and the DNC, uh, and your, the purchase of Hillary for prison T-shirts is what helps fund that. And regardless of whether she gets indicted in, the, in a federal court, we're, we have indicted her in the court of public opinion, and we are convicting her in this campaign. We must defeat Hillary Clinton. A vote for justice, a vote for people not being above the law. My gosh, we got to get Donald Trump in there. My gosh, Hillary is a crime boss. Imagine what she'll do if we don't kick her out. And they're going to engage in election fraud, but it's hard to beat a landslide. She's already stolen it from Bernie Sanders. This is such a rigged system, just as Donald Trump says. Robert in Tennessee, thanks for holding. What's your take on this? Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Good, my friend. Go ahead. Good. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm a big fan. Uh, you woken up myself, to my family, friends. Um, and it's really amazing what you guys over it, you and your crew do. At, we do have an amazing uh, crew. Wars. We do have an amazing crew. Uh, in fact, uh, I just this weekend got my Hillary for prison shirt in the mail. So thank you. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, promoting freedom uh, this upcoming election season. But uh, I just had a quick point and a, uh, and a question I wanted to ask you. Um, I just literally read the news about. Hillary not being charged um, for what she's been criminally been involved in um, just minutes before you went on air. And uh, I kind of got a sick feeling in my stomach because it just goes to show how corrupt uh, our government really is. I did, and, too. Uh, I did, too. I got I got nauseous. I was in a good mood this morning. And then I saw that. And I'm just in a terrible mood now. But I'm not going to let her break my will. She's over the top. She's arrogant. Look how freaked out Kumi looked. He looked like a, a fox caught with a big old, big old uh, rabbit in his mouth, you know, in the, in, in the rabbit coop or the chicken coop. I mean, he looked like he was freaked out. Look, this isn't good for these crooks. We've reached that moment where the crooks can't help themselves and they're uncloaking themselves. It's going to get rough, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Good to hear from you, Robert. Sorry to hear you felt sick about Thank that. Uh, that's a normal response, though. Yeah. Kenneth, Vincent, Nick, Vincent Brady, stay with us. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, I just came screeching into the chair here, working on news during that break. Forgot that was a 70-second break, not a three-minute one. I'm like running back in here. Uh, we've got a bunch of big guests uh, coming up here today. Obviously, we're going to have a panel discussion with Leanne McAdoo and, of course, uh, David Knight and Jakari Jackson at the bottom of this hour. Dr. Jerome Corsi pops in at the start of the next segment. He's got a new book out. We're also going to be talking about this uh, non-indictment and more. Uh, Roger Stone has got big news on the Clintons being Chinese communist agents. Uh, and Paul Joseph Watson hosts the fourth hour of Overdrive from Her Britannic Majesty's uh, England. So that is all coming up today. Uh, before I go any further, uh, we are going to be taking your phone calls, by the way, interspersed throughout the broadcast. All I'm asking is, like Limbaugh used to say, I understand your listeners are supporting us. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you. We couldn't do any of this without you. But when I go to your calls, I really want to hear what you think about what happened with Hillary 
and the indictment and, and, and where you think this country's going. Uh, because um, it gets a little obscene when we take call after call telling me how great I am. You're great. You're awesome, okay? But listen, I, I love everybody that loves freedom as well. We're in this together. I think we're going to win it, but we've got to stay focused on fighting the globalist. Kenneth in New York, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm just so disgusted with Hillary. Um, you know, just seeing this blatant uh, corruption. It uh, proves as a millennial to me that everything that you were saying is, I mean, it's true. It, it gives credibility. And it's just, uh, I have no, I have no words. I mean, you know, um, what happens if she gets in, we're done. I mean, we're, we're finished as a country, in my opinion. Well, when you look at how ignorant the average voter is, at least half of them, that's why these, these tyrants are so emboldened, uh, is we're looking at just incredibly dumbed down, stupid people who, as long as they're pandered to verbally, they're not really supported, but as long as the establishment panders to them and pats them on the head, they'll jump off a cliff. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unreal, you know, and we'll see, I, I guess, in the, uh, you know, at, at the elections, if, uh, <laughs> how this will all play out, but we, we need Trump. We need Trump uh, desperately. Um, you know, Can you I, I, imagine I, what Hillary's going to do if she gets in? I mean, she's going to go for broke. Th this will well, be like nothing we've ever seen. I worse, worse than Obama, worse than the Bushes, the you know, Bush crime family, everything that you've talked about. I mean, it all comes down to this. The technocrats, all the automation coming in, everything. The fluoride, I mean, everything is going to be ending up with her. I do see that. Uh, she gets in. Good points, Kenneth. Thank you for the call. Nick in the great state of Illinois. Nick, you're on the air. Welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. I uh, pray for you and pray for Trump every day. Thank you. Um, it's almost as if they're pushing for a uh, citizen's arrest for her because no one else is stepping up to the point, plate to uh, you know, be a leader and make something happen and, and uh, indict her. And, uh, and I just wish that uh, Trump would uh, give... Uh, Ron Paul or Jesse Ventura are called to be on his uh, VP list. Well, you know, Ventura would obviously want to do that. Paul is, I guess, being a purist, um, you know, when it comes to Trump. But Trump is a nationalist. He's an anti-globalist. Uh, he has really, uh, I've gone from holding my nose supporting him a year ago to really being proud of the fact I supported him. Because despite some of Trump's problems, uh, he's for real. He's got a lot of courage. And uh, he is just a great manifestation of, of America's, uh, probably America's last chance. And, you know, we've killed hundreds of millions of babies and we, we, we've been so corrupt and evil so long. Maybe we're just supposed to totally fall and collapse and, you know, the country's just supposed to burn. I mean, maybe that's what the socialists want and that's what they want. That's what they get. I mean, but it, 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 it really is up to us uh, to decide that. But uh, I hear you, brother. Great uh, point, uh, Nick. I appreciate your call. More calls from Brady, Denise, Vincent, Bill, and others. Straight ahead on Alex Jones. Well, his book came out a few weeks ago with the headline, Partners in Crime. And I tell you, this multi-time number one New York Times bestselling uh, author couldn't have been more dead on. World Net Daily Books. Dr. Jerome Corsi, who's worked in anti-terrorism and clandestine uh, consulting operations, who's been uh, involved in international banking, has multiple degrees, of course, uh, top of his class there at Harvard. Uh, good long-term friends for 40 years with Donald Trump. So I couldn't think of someone better in the next uh, 25 minutes we have with him to cover the waterfront, because we have just seen the FBI director about an hour and 30 minutes ago conclude a press conference where he said no indictment. He will not recommend an indictment. And Lynch said that she would go with his recommendation if she agreed with it, basically. That was the proviso we played on Friday. She said, well, she wouldn't recuse herself in case she disagreed with it, but she'd have to review it. So Dr. Jerome Corsi uh, joins us to talk about that, to talk about Trump and where all this is going. I have to be honest with the audience, okay? I have never had a more... Uh, disgusting feeling of dread in my stomach. Uh, I actually feel like someone's choking me right now. Uh, and, and, and of course, we've all been at the hospital and family members are dying or we've been at funerals. I mean, I've, I've, I've been in big car wrecks and things. I'm not saying I'm Mr. Tough Guy, but I've, I've been through some bad experiences. And I guess to kind of analyze my own psychological uh, perspective, I've been 
dealing with the Clintons for 20 plus years. I know how evil they are. And it really is disheartening to realize that they're about to get even more power and are getting more corrupt as they go along and have promised to come after the liberty movement and the patriots. And she's starting all these wars and she's working with Al-Qaeda and ISIS and they've been persecuting Christians and conservatives and veterans and people. I mean, to come to grips with the fact that she looks three or four times crazier than she did in the 90s. And the way she acts and bragging about killing people and lying about, you know, Brian Williams stories about how she's in combat. I, I mean, there's just not just a feeling. There is a total intellectual understanding bodily at a cellular level of getting ready for a physical fight. I mean, I physically, physically feel like I'm in the parking lot and a guy just pulled a gun on me. You know, that's happened before back when I was growing up in Dallas. I mean, I have that same feeling of disgust and dread and not fear. It's, it's more like, get ready. Now, I want to go to Dr. Corsi to discuss this and more, her communist Chinese connections, all of it. It is incredible. I want to ask Dr. Corsi out of the gates what his view of this, where this is going. And, and of course, his book, Perfectly Timed with the proper name and the, and the research, of these partners in crime, Bill and Hillary, what they're planning to do, because I have a gut feeling and intellectual understanding that they are going to get their total wish list now and, and go for broke. Uh, is, is that an accurate statement, Dr. Corsi? I agree with you entirely. I mean, I think the what we see today is that the fix is in. I mean, clearly, you've got the uh, FBI, you know, if you listen carefully to Comey's statement, he basically said Hillary committed a number of crimes, that she's guilty of criminal negligence, and yet she's going to escape. She's not going to get indicted for things that normally people like Petraeus and others would have, have been prosecuted for. You know, double standard of law, and now Hillary Clinton has clearly tainted goods. It's obvious she lied, that she had classified emails that were transmitted over her server, that she knew about and should have known about, but yet she's not going to be prosecuted. Now, this again is a double standard. And by the way, Alex, the whole thing looks like a setup. I mean, you have um, Bill Clinton on the tarmac, wink, wink, with Loretta Lynch. Uh, then CNN starts, you know, tweeting that they have inside sources. There's going to be no prosecution. Hillary comes in over the holiday and testifies or gives an you know, in, a, a interview with the FBI. And then here we are immediately after Comey saying no prosecution. Hillary shows up in North Carolina flying on Air Force One with Barack Obama. The whole thing look as orchestrated as when Candy Crowley pulled out, you know, the speech that Obama gave after Benghazi during the debate with Romney. It looks completely choreographed and wink, wink. Even Loretta Lynch saying, I'll just accept the recommendation of the FBI. Sure, she already knew the FBI wasn't going to prosecute. Of course she'd accept Doctor, let me ask you this. I mean, you've been a political insider for a long time. You've, you almost always call it like it is, almost like 99% of the time. What is the point of rubbing our faces in it? What, what is the point of acting so incredibly arrogant and Hillary kind of letting them have that let them eat cake moment, it seems? Or, or is this just megalomania? Is, is this just people that have decided as a political class... They have Republican establishment cover. They're going to go for broke. Yeah, I mean, the, the Clinton's attitude, like it was, it has been in Europe with the EU, is, you know, the United States would be a good country except for the voters. We'd be just fine if the voters could be ignored. Because the voters are stupid. They don't know what they're doing. So the elites, the Clintons, who are above the law, get to determine how they make vast riches, you know, billions of dollars out of the Clinton Foundation, something we would go to jail for doing how she can violate national security laws with her emails, which even the FBI admits is negligent, reckless. You know, how are we going to elect a reckless, negligent, incompetent person who can't run a BlackBerry to be president of the United States? But of course, that's all supposed to be washed away because we've got a photo op, an Air Force One with Barack Obama and Hillary, and they're going to hold hands and do kissy face and uh, tell the people we need to have Hillary for eight years. Let me ask you this question. She's claiming she's gonna go to the center of elected, um, but from what I've seen them setting up and their preparations, it looks like the opposite. From your sources and your own political uh, gravitas, 
if she gets in, what do you expect to happen? Again, my gut tells me leave the country. Well, I mean, it, for certainly you're right in terms of that she's going to go more to the left. There's no question about it. I mean, Hillary has had Huma Abedin advisor. Uh, she was the one who is, I think, the butcher of Libya. I think you're going to find in the coming months that Hillary was the one who destabilized Libya, um, abused women throughout Libya, let Libya go to the al-Qaeda terrorists. I mean, this has already been clear from the Benghazi investigations we've had, especially the Citizens Commission on Benghazi made it absolutely clear that Hillary threw Libya to the dogs. Uh, I think with the Clinton Foundation, with things in, I'm proving my book and others, you know, we've got uh, Peter Schweitzer out there as well. Clinton's wanted the oil in Libya. They wanted to gain economically with Blumenthal. They didn't care if millions died in the process. Uh, you're going to have a Supreme Court that's going to be so far left, it's going to be unimaginable. It's going to be an expansion of government so that we have more government control in every possible area, more climate control, fake science that's going to further destroy the United States' ability to be an industry leader, world leader, and coal and oil. Uh, Obama's just about shut down the coal industry. Hillary will make sure it's killed. I mean, you go issue after issue, and what's going to happen is, and, and by the way, conservatives, anyone who disagrees with this far leftist agenda is going to be identified as hate crime, will be put in, you know, concentration camps for thought reform. Uh, it'll be criminal to do things like be a climate denier. Uh, meanwhile, Israel's going to be abandoned, thrown to the dogs. Iran's already been given, you know, free reign to develop nuclear weapons, and the Iranians are saying they've got 100,000 missiles pointed at Israel. No one's going to stand up under a Clinton administration for Israel. Uh, we're going to have deficits that are going to bankrupt average Americans, throw us into a global currency with the TPP and this transatlantic agreement, both being ratified in a lame duck session. I think they'll ratify TPP. And then they'll push the transatlantic under agreement. We'll be into a global world economy, which is the prelude to a global government. Wow. Well, I kind of feel like we're sitting here, Dr. Corsi, just calmly presiding over the death of the republic. There have been so many signposts, so many indicators of a political class and, and foreign interest uh, being basically uh, somewhat invincible because of the corruption at the top. But now it seems to be getting worse. I mean, is it accurate that it's getting worse or do we just know more about it now? Oh, I think it's a combination. I mean, you've done a great deal. We've all work to expose the corruption, to expose the far left agenda for what it is, which is totalitarianism uh, and, and elimination of the Constitution, our free speech. You're going to have a Supreme Court that's going to be unimaginable under Hillary Clinton. Uh, you're going to find that, I think like in Europe, uh, Americans are waking up and I think saying enough to this agenda, but this is a critical time. If Hillary Clinton manages to be president, then the Clinton Foundation is going to go into overdrive. Obama will have his own criminal foundation. Politicians in the United States will be in it for one reason, that is money, maybe money and power. You'll see the rich get richer, the global rich. They'll be the extremely well off. And then everybody else who can barely not buy a house or you know, live from paycheck to paycheck. And they won't care. The global elite won't care. There'll be lie after lie after lie, a double standard of prosecution. Conservatives will be defined as politically criminals, while the Clintons making millions, you know, uh, ignoring laws with regards to classified information, running their own above the law entirely. Uh, so this is a classic totalitarian takeover. And if you just joined us, Dr. Jerome Corsi of WND.com. Uh, well, he's had three or four number one New York Times bestselling books. Uh, two of his books have openly, they say, uh, affected the outcome of U.S. elections. So this guy uh, is not playing games. Partners in Crime is the new book. And while he's talking, I'm being flooded with just backup articles and you know, th things, that, things that we've seen where they're openly in the Democratic Party platform. Daily Call reported last week saying they want to arrest climate change deniers. Uh, they want to now start arresting people in Canada and the U.S. and Europe that say there's only two genders. 
I mean, this is true totalitarianism with a dumbed down mass of minions behind it. And it, it looks like the left as a kind of fascist global movement with socialism as the political tool at the bottom, exempting themselves uh, from it, are basically attempting a final takeover. But, but, so speak to that, sir, and then expand, though. How does the Brexit affect that, though? It seems like that's only getting them to accelerate their timetable. Well, in fact, I, I think what you see today with you know, Hillary Clinton being being announced by Comey that the FBI is not going to recommend prosecution. Now you're going to see a a, a run, you know, a, a mad run to the finish line where the globalists are going to try to take over power completely so that they can say the Brexit vote. Well, we're just going to ignore it. We're going to slow it down. So they're going to try to sew it up. Let's slow it up. We're not going to pull out right away. And then they cause an, a massive international crisis where, you know, out, out of fear. Great Britain says, oh, we better rejoin the EU. We better come on back. We don't want to destroy anything. This is the, the setup to push the United States. And Hillary's the plan. The Bilderberger globalist plan is to do the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, you know, the Transatlantic Investment Partnership. This puts us into a global economic one world order that is the prelude to what we're seeing now in the EU, where the EU is finally saying openly that they meant empire. They're going to have their own army. They're going to destroy the individual countries' legislatures. You know, Italy is going to do what the EU wants it to do. That's always been the plan. It's been a lie from the very beginning. That's right. They now admit, oh, we're just going to dissolve your military and we'll have an EU military and you can't leave. Open declaration of Hitlerian invasion or, 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 or communist style, uh, you know, Soviet takeover. I mean, this is classic and they're doing it so nakedly, I guess, because they're in power and, and it's the same thing that will to power historically. Let me ask you this. You mentioned the Bilderberg Group. They had the professor there that invented the term the precariat where, oh, we've made everyone precarious to control them. Now uh, let's put everyone on a monthly stipend so everyone's on welfare, so everyone's dependent. Well, well we've always known that's the plan with welfare and Cloward and Piven. But as you said, they now came out last week and said, we are an empire. We are totalitarian. We are technocratic. We will take over your military and we are going to make it where your the money you get every month is is controlled by us. I mean, that is a nightmare scenario, but it's coming from them. We would you would write books. I would write articles, you know, exposing these statements to say, look, this is horrible. Instead, they've got the political calculus, Dr. Jerome Corsi, of just throwing it in our face. What's the thinking there? Well, I mean, I, again, I think they're going to run to the finish line naked. They don't care. And the things that we were, you know, branded conspiracy theorists and ridiculed by the globalists, now they're publishing openly. The EU has declared it wants to be an empire. And look, this all fits together. The same day you've got Hillary's not going to be prosecuted, the FBI caves in, admits she broke laws, but who cares? You've got the House going to vote, the House Democrats pushing again for gun control. They're not going to give up pushing for the guns. Freedom by freedom here. So, you know, the elite don't have to face law the way we have to face law. Hillary, oh, no, well, well she did all these things. You know, she, oh, there were, yes, she lied. Well, there were classified documents. She lied. She, you know, knew that the documents were classified. They were marked, actually. But that's okay. Don't worry about it because, you know, we can't prove intent. Well, of course you can prove intent. You proved intent on Petraeus for far lesser crimes. She went to great pains to set up this separate email system, and she did it for a reason. The reason she did it was to evade all the government scrutiny, the FOIA requests, and to be able to pad her personal piggy bank with the Clinton Foundation, with all kinds of emails shared between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation, where they could cash in on her direct on her various decisions, selling State Department decisions. And of course, all this is just going to be excused. And we're going to be told, you know, by the officials that are there, that, oh, this is not a, we can't prosecute for this. You know, yes, all these crimes were committed, but we can't prosecute for this. Well, that's totalitarianism. That's the double standard. That's the elite. She's already been crowned part of the elite. She's already been declared president by the Bilderberger Group. Now they're just going to play the show out, the drama. You know, we have the Comey press conference. And now we've got the Clinton appearance with Obama and Air Force One, which, by the way, who paid for taxpayers? So here we get this coming on. And now we've got Obama 
you know, kissy kissy with Hillary, and she's going to be promoted as innocent, just pursued by the right wing, while she pushes the global agenda, free trade agreements, taking, you know, people don't realize that John Kerry signed the UN's gun declaration while all this was going on. The trade ambassador, U.S. Trade Ambassador Froman declared that they were going to pass TP in the lame duck session. The lame duck session when, you know, in between the election and the new Congress coming in. The elite don't give up. And this is a, the elite today think they've won a victory. Now, where the American people vote, and if the American people start listening and waking up and understanding that, you know, Donald Trump, imperfect though he may be, is the only one who's going to call this without worrying about political correctness. That's just another standard, so none of us tell the truth. I agree with you. And by the way, I think they've miscalculated. I think they're rushing the finish line out of concern. Uh, and I think the fact that this isn't a regular cycle where you've got some milk toast Republican that's going to lay down, his greatest attribute is he's brazen and brave, and, and, and you know him well. Uh, he's committed uh, to what he's doing, and so... That's got to really worry Hillary when he gets into debates with her uh, and, 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 you know, starts bringing all this up because, you know, they're hoping to keep this from her constituents. But as more of this comes out, I expect that 20, 30 percent that doesn't vote, a big percentage to switch to Trump. Uh, so, A, what do you think Trump should do? How do you think Hillary will strike back? And do you expect them to try to steal the election? Uh, they're going to try to steal the election, no question. They're going to do voter fraud. They're going to do everything they can. Trump um, is the real deal. I've known Trump a long time. He is the real deal. And he is going to say these are criminals and that they are criminals who think they're above the law. And if you allow them, they're now, as demonstrated here with the FBI, they're going to rig the law in their favor. They're going to run the foundation to make billions for themselves, you know, sending defective drugs to AIDS victims in Africa. Uh, stealing hundreds of millions of dollars from the Unif Unit Aid Fund through the UN, uh, filing fraudulent financial statements for their foundations. I mean, this is the real crime. This is the real stealing. You know, these are two grifters, Bill and Hillary Clinton. They have a trail behind them that stinks to high heaven of criminal activity and getting away with it. You know, they don't. No, I didn't really have sex with that woman. No, I didn't really violate any laws with my emails. Well, I didn't really benefit myself all that much from the Clinton Foundation. All lies. And this is the beginning. If the American people don't understand, go with Donald Trump saying that she's crooked, the system is rigged, it's time to stop it. You know, Thomas Jefferson was right. Every now and then, the elite just need to be thrown out. And this is a time when if the elite win now, there won't be a reversal of their control, domination, and push to totalitarianism. And and we're not being rhetorical here. We're not, you know, in, in engaging in rhetoric. We're not hyping this. This is cut and dry what we're facing. And I think people in the government, corporations, just the general public has to all start resisting every way they can and withdrawing our consent from this illegitimate federal government that has become a criminal occupied. Uh, system, Dr. Corsi. I think that's that's all we can do uh, and start really moving towards uh, some type of emergency plan uh, to deal with the central government because clearly they're gearing up for civil unrest while they create an atmosphere that helps it take place, while they radicalize all these leftist groups to target local government. I mean, you, you look at this, it looks like a communist destabilization plan. I know it's not communist, but it's it's offshore elites like Soros using a classical destabilization plan. Well, I, n I never thought I'd live in a country where the government had gone so far to the totalitarian left, using the IRS politically to punish conservatives, you know, defining as criminal expression which should be allowed under the First Amendment to... You know, be an objector to the whole science and climate change. And by the way, the last thing we'll do right now, gun push is going to intensify to get our guns away. That's the that's the next thing you can expect. All right, Partners in Crime, the book, World Net Daily Books, WND.com. Uh, come back soon to talk about their, their next push, Dr. Corsi. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Alex. Great, great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Very dark times, folks. Very dark times.
All right, we are going to be going to your phone calls with uh, Brady and Denise and Sergeant, as well as Vincent, Shane, and others uh, in, in the next half hour. It's a roundtable uh, discussion. Uh, we have a little bit of the next hour. Then Roger Stone's going to be joining us. We're going to have Jakari Jackson, David Knight, uh, Leanne McAdoo, and myself. And that's the reason we have three studios, really, in here that we can go live from now, because we have so many great crew members and reporters that just like Fox News or CNN or whatever, we've got our desk in there. They can get ready in another room. We can cut to them with breaking news, breaking analysis. We can cut to the other newsrooms. And we're hiring a couple more reporters, camera people, uh, and writers right now as we tweak things to be able to really try to be able to cover world events, send reporters around the country and around the planet uh, to really give you first looks and, and, and unfiltered analysis and live feeds, uh, whether it be the Davos meeting or Bilderberg or the Republican DNC and RNCs uh, that are coming up. And that's why it's more important than ever that you financially support InfoWars. We have the Hillary for Prison shirts for 1995. All the profit of this next round of shirts right through to the RNC and DNC is going towards four flights a day, two days at the RNC, two days at the DNC, $35,000. It's $30,000 for the flights, $5,000 for the banners. We're going to have two different banners. Uh, and so these are giant banners, not just the regular size, the big, huge ones that say <laughs> Hillary for President, Infowars.com. Because, look, we're going to get justice in the court of public opinion regardless of what the compromised, corrupt uh, FBI leadership does or others. We know crimes when they're openly committed. Also, we're extending the 4th of July independence sale right through this week, but then it will end because uh, we're not allowed to do that anymore with our water filter suppliers or with the storable food suppliers uh, because th this is the lowest you'll find anywhere. 20 to 40 percent off storable foods that are already at the lowest price anywhere, powered by My Patriot Supply. It's InfoWars Select by private labeling. We can go even lower. That is the best deal you'll find anywhere. Also, 20% off Alexa Pure water filters, also off their air purifiers and Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. And there's also some other items on the site that are 20 to 40% off. Take advantage of the Independence Day sale. You do not want to be self, uh, not self-sufficient. You do not want to be dependent on the globalists, you want to be independent, and the best thing we can do is pull out of the system more and more and be self-sufficient. So whether it's non-GMO heirloom seeds or the nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com, it is now time to take action. And to be specific, InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. InfoWarsLife.com is the sub-site where you find the nutraceuticals. Just like InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the storable foods. It's just kind of like a bookmarker to go right to the sub-page. But InfoWarsStore.com, you can find it all right there. Or simply call toll-free 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. Whether it's vitamin mineral fusion or living defense or secret 12 or brain force or the joint and bone formulas or anthroplex or silver bullet or knockout sleep aid, all of these are amazing products and are of the highest quality. That is our guarantee to you to only produce and sell products that we ourselves use and our families use and from our research are the very best and the cleanest out there. Now, shifting gears to our round table discussion and your phone calls. I detest Hillary Clinton, not because she's a woman, but because she's a monstrous creature that gets hundreds of millions of dollars, 100 million alone from the Saudis who are the most oppressive people and the most anti-liberal people in the world. And only by being a so-called liberal can she have the cover. If Donald Trump was taking hundreds of millions of dollars from Gulf state dictators, where women are executed if they're caught you know, having sex outside of marriage or whatever, or gays, it's just insane. And then to see her get all this cover and the leftists make jokes, it's sick. And then her crimes on all of the different things she's done, it makes my head spin. So I wanna go through the response what what Leanne McAdoo felt and saw today uh, as a journalist when she saw this unfold, then Jakari and David Knight, and then we'll also uh, talk to the callers. And then I want to ask our roundtable, where do you think this is going next? Because I have never in, in the last few years had a sense of dread building up like I do now, and my gut's never wrong. And now it's gone from dread to just full on, ugh. I mean, just, just I just want her out of my life. It's like a bad neighbor or a bad boss or a bad employee or a bad cousin or a bad, you know, uh, relative, whatever it is. You can get them out of your life. You can stop associating with them. 
They're called stalkers if they won't get out of your life. But I, I really have a visceral bad feeling when I look at Hillary Clinton because I, I just, it's everything that's wrong with the world. Leanne McAdoo. I agree with you. I was filled with dread, anger. She disgusts me. To me, she is like an oozing pustule, like a seeping bed sore, and someone needs to flip her over. I mean, she's so disgusting. <sighs> she's decaying, and that's what she wants to do to this country. And the fact that the FBI director, the things that he said, he's just count contradicting himself, saying that the Clinton and her aides were extremely careless with the way they handled. Yeah, they could care less about the rule of law. She was very careful to cut the tops off. Yeah, and then saying that they mishandled it. Well, why not at least charge her with mishandling classified information? You know, General Petraeus, the same thing happened to him. I mean, that's at least just a misdemeanor, but not even that. And to just say that they were careless with the way that they did it, uh, her aide admitted that they burned her daily schedule. Why? Who are you meeting with that you need to burn your schedule? And then the fact that that's, they're destroying federal documents. And they know that they did that. And not to mention the fact that she certified under penalty of perjury that she'd fully complied with the court order. She handed over all of her official emails to the State Department. But we know again and again that that is absolutely false. She used it as a drop box for clandestine espionage. And then when we, this is what we found out during the, the Benghazi hearing, the Benghazi committee, which they said, oh, they didn't get her at all. What a waste of time. Well, so this was in October 2015. Secretary Clinton could not explain why she failed to turn over 15 Libya-related emails. And her response is, I was under no obligation to make any of my emails available unless I decided they were work-related. Remember, though, first she said a few years ago she didn't even have a server or other emails. Right. No, she said she only used one phone. Meanwhile, she's been photographed with multiple devices. And Kumi just says there's nothing there. That's what just makes me so angry is that now the president is flying her around on Air Force One. It's just an additional slap in the face to the American people. Millions of dollars a day. Not only are we not going to charge her with anything, she's going to get away with the crime. We're also going to fly her around on your dime because she's the exalted goddess, uh, Hillary Clinton. But check this out. So this is what, I mean, explain this to me. So Comey says, to be clear. This is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. To the contrary, those individuals are often subject to security or administrative sanctions. But that's not what we are deciding now. So if anybody else does what Hillary Clinton did, they'd be in big trouble. But not Hillary Clinton. Nope, she gets flown around on the Air Force uh, One. It's this gimmick. It's the gimmick that she's a woman. It's just, this is who they want. It's her time. It's already been decided. They asked her to step down because it was Obama's time in the past. Now it is her time, and they'll do whatever sure. they can. And Here's my next question. What it looks like. Here's my next question. We're going to Jakari. What does your intellectual but also your gut level tell you about what she'll do when she gets in? Well, I think Jerome Corsi nailed it. I mean, she is, we've had prophets say, you know, that Obama would be the last president. I truly feel like that could possibly happen if she becomes the president. She will be become a dictator. a dictator. So many things will happen under her, and she's just going to go. That's what Secret Service agent Burns said on her last week. He said she wants a socialist dictatorship. Yeah, and all these people who over the weekend were hashtagging America was never great, you're going to get what you've asked for. Exactly. America has had a lot of problems. I, I, we talk about it. But they don't even teach U.S. history anymore except bad stuff. What about compared to all the other countries? Right. Because, because they only teach you what America did that was bad. Why did everybody want to come here then? Because compared to other places, it was great in many ways, and its ideals helped lead the world in women's rights and in so many other issues. Now, England led the world in ending slavery, and then we were kind of late to the game in that. But, but, but I mean, it, it, it's just so crazy how these socialists holding up their smartphones and all this stuff bitch about everything when it's the ultra elite that are funding them to help right. overthrow the middle class so there's no way out. Jakari Jackson, your take on Hillary and where all this is going. Well, just like that caller that you had on earlier in the show, I believe he said he was some kind of a defense contractor. And he said that he's not allowed to use uh, the government information on his personal phone or send it to a personal email and all that. And you look at the actions of Mrs. Clinton, who is doing that exact same thing. And you contrast that with uh, Guccifer or Bradley Manning or Snowden, Snowden or Assange. 
all these guys who get this classified information, they want to run them through the ringer. But you have Mrs. Clinton, who's very much aware of she's that she's not supposed to do this because your caller knows that. Of course, she has to know this, but she just gets away with it because she's Mrs. Hillary Rodham Clinton. That's right. Uh, Jakari, what do you think she's going to pull once she gets in? Because I mean, we've already seen what they've done so far, and it seems like everything is accelerating. What do you think is going to happen? I think she's going to go a whole hog if she gets in there. She's going to mm -hmm. try to pass everything that's been shot down, whether it's uh, gun control or this new uh, politically correct movement. I guess it's not new, but uh, growing in strength, politically correct movement. She's going to do everything that she wants to do. She's going to keep telling these whopper lies, but how she dodges sniper fire like she's Neo in the Matrix and all <laughs> these other things that she's been doing the entirety of her career and always running to these people. She's so uh, experienced. People just hate her because she has so much experience. Well, let's look at her track record. What has she actually done that was good? She lies about everything. Uh, you know, she's uh, covering, or she calls uh, bills uh, bimbos or whatever the, the terminology was. She talks to the Benghazi victims. She promises she's going to help them. And then when they come out and want some accountability, she calls them liars. She tells them to get over it. We have the article up just last week about the uh, Benghazi widow who said, uh, Mrs. Clinton, you said you're going to help me, and now you're telling me to get over it. Yeah, this is the type of on. action that we can expect from a President Clinton. Now, going to David Knight. David, let me ask you this question. What do you really think is going on here? Why is she so above the law? She looks like she's half dead. Clinton looks like he's going to die any minute. I mean, seriously. I, I said he was like a reanimated corpse a few years ago. Uh, out of Day of the Dead, but he looks like he's dying, uh, like people I've seen that are, you know, a month away from dying of cancer. David Knight, uh, why are the elites so behind him? Uh, they would put us to sleep if they put somebody younger in or somebody who didn't have all this baggage. Is this just the arrogance of the elite, or what are they planning? Yeah, Alex, uh, she's the only dog they've got in the fight at this moment. You know, we've had situations in the past. So you look at uh, four years ago, we had Obama and we had Romney. What they wanted then was Obamacare. They were going to get it whether they got Romney or Obama. And that's the way they like to play. They like to have uh, two people uh, on either side, this this fake uh, choice that they present. That's what Carol quickly said time. in Tragedy and Hope. He said, we just have right. two different parties, but really they're closely tied. So we get the same right. agenda regardless. But Trump upsets that. And you see that the establishment elite and both parties are very concerned about Trump. They want to do anything, no matter how blatant it is. And Alex, as I pointed out on Sunday, this was an orchestrated cover-up. We could see this developing. And I knew, and I said it on Sunday, I said, look, if you need, had any doubts as to whether or not she's going to get indicted, look at the fact that they scheduled the FBI meeting on the Saturday around the 4th of July weekend. That's, other than like the last Saturday before Christmas, that's the, the time that they could, only time they could pick where there'd be fewer people paying attention to this. And that's precisely what they've done. If you look at it a week ago, we had the snakes on a plane meeting. And she says, well, it was just personal information. Look, we understand that Attorney General Lynch is a close personal friend of Bill Clinton. That's why she should have recused herself even before this meeting, which violated every ethical standard that the American Bar Association or any other legal group would have there. She had a close personal relationship. She had a close working relationship with him. He is the one who gave her all of her big career breaks. They had a close political relationship. Those are the three tests as to whether or not you should recuse yourself. Plus she they checked had all the, three boxes. That's key, but plus they had the FBI order the cameras turned off. I want to go back to you, David right. Jakari, on this, but let me ask Leanne this question. Why have the meeting? Why try to cover it up? Then why to try to act like it's no big deal once they did it? I got to tell you, it's like they did it on purpose. They know how to secretly meet and not yes. have to be on a tarmac in front of 50 reporters. When, 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 when Lynch was one of the hottest interviews at the time, being chased around, why are they doing this? Nichols knew them well, helped put them in power. He said they want to break our will. I agree. I agree. And that's almost what that's how I feel like my will is broken. Like they put it out in your face. They even leaked conveniently that Hillary Clinton is considering keeping uh, Loretta Lynch on as the attorney general if she gets elected. You know, they, it's like they're just putting out this information to just show us how above the law they are and how we're powerless, they can do whatever they want, the rules don't apply to them. Jakari, do you think it's that, or do you think we're reading more into it? I mean, I'm just It's crazy how arrogant they are. I think they honestly feel that they are above the law, and, and to an extent they have proved that. It's to a point now where they're just going to do anything they want because they know that nothing's going to happen to them. They're just going to come out there with the media machine, the politically correct machine. You hate Hillary because she's a woman. You don't want to see the first woman president. That's all they have. And to go on what David was talking about, 
Lynch's personal relationship as it comes to the Clintons. Okay, maybe they are close personal friends in real life, but if you get selected for jury duty and you know the uh, the accused, you're not going to get selected for that jury. It's just that exactly. simple. Meanwhile, they have them running around uh, investigating them, and they're hanging out talking about supposedly golf. Well, she offered that as an ESPN. excuse. Yeah, yeah, it's not an excuse. It's a reason that she shouldn't have even it's still called, been in that position as a prosecutor or judging the, the evidence. If you're a judge, yeah. a prosecutor, or a witness in a trial right. or in a criminal case, you don't talk to the other people uh, outside of court or a registered you know, police uh, interrogation room. You do not talk to them. No, I mean, what do but, we do at this point? How do we let this stand? I mean, that's what it is. They're breaking our will to let us see that we are completely powerless, but we're not powerless. How do we change this? That's a good question, David. I mean, how do you think we change it? I mean, I think in the court of public opinion, we, we destroy these people. We don't just lay down and have them break our will, just like they tried to break our will with the British exit. We just go to the next level. They're never going to give up. We're never going to give up. And that's what we have to understand. This is the animating contest of liberty, David. As we were talking about this morning, uh, Alex, it is really their declaration of independence of, of the rule of law. Because mm -hmm. as we saw last week, it, not only did she not recuse herself, as I point out, because of these close personal relationships, but then they did it in our face, as you're pointing out, with a declaration. Then the day that we learned about that, which was two days later, last Wednesday, they come out and say, we're not going to release any of the emails for at least 27 months. Mm -hmm. That was something the State Department wanted, and that was something the Department of Justice under Lynch said we're not going to do. Then we find out they're going to hold this meeting at the time that nobody's going to pay attention to it. When I heard that they were having, the FBI was going to have the uh, meeting today on Hillary Clinton, I told my wife, I said, that's it. They're not going to do that's anything right. at all to her. Right. But then when he started to talk about this, Alex, and he started to lay out all the details of what they had to do with their investigation, how they found 110 classified emails, and that was a felony, I said, I can't believe this. Sounds like he's going to indict her. And then he does a complete 180 you know again and really says, is? you know, they're you know felonies, really but we don't really care. Yeah. Just they're, don't try this at home. They're what covering he's Obama. They're covering for Obama. He won't even have to do a Nixonian pardon. Yeah. yeah. They're not even have to do a pardon because they're just going to have the bureaucracy pardons, you know. And this is really a almost a coup of the bureaucracy. This means yeah. if you can get in as the attorney general or the head of the FBI, wow. you run the country pretty much. I mean, yeah. This is way beyond Jager Hoover at this point. Stay there, guys. I'm going to go right to the calls here. Brady, Sergeant, Shane, Vincent, Denise, your call straight ahead. Your comments. We're going to get you on, but your quick comments straight ahead, callers. So get ready. Leanne McAdoo, Alex Jones, Jakari Jackson, David Knight, all reporting from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide. And you heard Dr. Corsi earlier. He says they're going to criminally come after their political enemies. That's exactly what uh, Larry Nichols said last Friday. So this is serious. We're extending the 4th of July Independence Day sales on 20 to 40% off storable foods, water filters, you name it, at InfoWarsStore.com. Be sure to take advantage of that. It's One thing I can do is just get ready myself and fight as hard as I can to wake people up. We're doing a roundtable discussion here a little bit in the next hour. Uh, then Roger Stone joins us with a lot of breaking news of the Clinton crime family and on the attempts to ban pro-Trump rallies uh, at the RNC, but they're going to let the Democrats operate. This just shows the fix is in, but don't let them oppress you as a political group. Don't let them silence you. Because if they're able to intimidate us and shut us up, then we're in a lot of trouble. This is, the, this is a fight. Uh, Brady in Virginia, thanks for holding her on the air. Go ahead. Uh, hi, guys. I, I basically share the same frustration from the FBI's comments this morning. But I also had a uh, thought going forward. I'm wondering, even after the liberal media and the Democrats have criticized the Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch meeting, do you think Bernie Sanders will still sell out and endorse Hillary? Absolutely. He, he, he's a socialist. He wants to gut this country. He, he hates it. He wants to see it brought down so him and his little commissars can divvy up the money and sit there in their duchies. And, and that's how this always works. Th these are predators. I mean, I believe he is a predator. He says a lot of stuff that sounds good on the surface, but he's a hardcore predator. When it comes time to him to really go up to the Federal Reserve stuff, he doesn't. Uh, so that, th that's my view on Sanders. What do you think? Uh, what do you think, Jakari? What do you think, David? Well, I agree with what you said right there. Uh, when you have a guy like Bernie Sanders, of course, he's not exactly happy as to uh, what happened between him and Clinton in the primaries. But at the end of the day, he's going to support that party because it's the closest thing to the uh, socialist utopia that he'd like to see happen. Right. Yeah, I, I think he was waiting in the wings, Alex, uh, to see if they're going to indict Hillary Clinton and if that was going to change things to the Democrat Party. But I don't think he ever had a chance. 
The Democrat leadership would not have uh, given this to him. I think they would have put in Joe Biden. I think they're that corrupt. Yeah, it's a Politburo uh, cult. They're the central committee, yeah. and now they admit that. They just appoint who the nominees are, and Trump's not playing along, so the fix is in. That's right. And you're talking about what's going to happen next. We understand what's going to happen next because we've seen what they have done coming after whistleblowers. Look at the case of Thomas Drake, for example. Again, saying that he had classified emails on his computer, which he didn't. But they tried to put him away for 35 years. And we'll talk about that in detail uh, later today. But um, Yeah, in the fourth hour. By the way, they, yeah. they SWAT teamed. They SWAT yeah. teamed uh, Benny. That's right. I mean, this is uh, Leanne. That's right. They trumped up charges against these people when they hadn't done anything. That's what Hillary Clinton will do, whatever she wants. But she will punish her enemies, just as we've seen them try to punish these NSA whistleblowers. That's right. Leanne McAdoo, when you were around Austin, and I'm guessing you talked to some so-called liberals. I'm thinking you was like a real liberal, libertarian. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, we're uh, pretty, pretty much politically on the same page as common sense freedom. When you're talking to liberals, I mean, I know some of them are supporting Hillary. I don't find many, which really shows what a hoax this is. Why are they supporting her? Or can you even find anybody? Well, I've try very hard to not be around people who support Hillary Clinton. But if I do happen to run into that one odd fellow or female out there, I just, how do you gaslight yourself? How do you sit there and say that her crimes are excusable, that she could actually be the next president of the United States of America just because she's a woman? She, I mean, that's- As a woman, do you want the first woman president to be that lady? I, I would we not. We deserve better. As a woman, I deserve better. I deserve a better representative to be the first female president. What are, are the left just like Venezuela in places so dumb when everything collapses, they'll in five, 10 years, they won't, or even sooner, they won't even know why it happened. They'll just call for more socialism. Well, and that's what it is. It's like they're dumbing us down and they're just breaking our will to the point where people are just bending and they're saying, well, she's totally corrupt and she's proven that she's above the law. They, they come right out and say, if anyone else does it, they're gonna go to jail, sure. but she's fine. Caller, you anything else you want to add? Caller's gone. I'm going to go right back, and he's been holding the longest after that. Vincent, uh, then uh, Denise Sargent and others, uh, Jakari Jackson and David Knight riding shotgun with us a bit more straight ahead. And then uh, they'll be back in the fourth hour today. Uh, and we've also got some other special guests joining us. Stay with us. Please spread the word about this feed, audio feeds, local stations, however you're listening to us. They don't want folks to hear this. Please don't take it for granted. Continue with calls after uh, our roundtable leaves us here in about five minutes. And, of course, Roger Stone's coming on with a lot of breaking news. But we're on your calls right now as well. Let's talk to Vincent in Washington. You're on the air, Vincent. What's your comment on the whole FBI not calling for an indictment of uh, in the invincible Hillary? Hey, Alex, how's it going, man? Good, brother. I'll I, I tell you what. I, I am so speechless at the corruption and and criminal activity that's going on by the government and I'm, I'm so many times you talk about you know it's like twilight zone these people are doing stuff right in people's faces and it's like the majority of the of the of the country is so brainwashed <laughs> yeah it, it's like right in your face they don't care and people act like it's just normal. Well, that's what I'm getting from the listeners is the same thing. Just flabbergasted. Uh, we know she lied and said she didn't have the server, didn't have the email, had one device. We know she ordered them to cut the classified tops off. We know everybody's saying she should be indicted. And it's just, then you ask, what else is she going to get away with? Good, good. Same, same point everybody's making, Vincent. I appreciate your call. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you know, F, Comey basically just said, yeah, like, like David Knight said. The, the political elite have, have, have given our, their declaration of independence from the law. They don't have to obey it. We do. And a quick thing on, 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 on the gun grab, uh, you know how uh, the California governor, he signed all those gun laws. They're, they're stripping the guns from the state of California. It's becoming a communist state. And then on top of that, to show how much they don't have to obey the law, the, the California Senate votes 28 to 8 to exempt themselves from the law. I forgot that. I saw that? that last week. Wow. That's what I mean. They, they, it's like literal. They are tax exempt. Like in the EU, they can have guns. Nobody else can. It's right. new royalty. Jakari, I think, uh, thank right. you so much, Vincent. Uh, uh, Jakari, I think it comes down to this. This is not just a declaration of independence against the law. It's a, it's a political revolution of the new royalty. I mean, I think that's what this is. I think it's what we call this. Uh, uh, final comments from Jakari and David Knight. 
Well, they are acting as if they're royal, you I mean, because they want a separate, as the caller was saying right there, they want a separate set of rules for themselves yeah. and the little people. You know, they have, they go to these buildings, you know, I want everybody to understand when you see these, these senators, these congressmen, these presidents, even your local city council saying we want to ban guns, we want to get rid of guns. They work in a building nine to five with taxpayer funded armed security. I'm sure they feel very safe when they go to work in the morning. But I'm talking about for everybody else in the country, if you work the graveyard shift in a bad part of town, you may need a little something, something to protect Absolutely. yourself. Well, that's As what the makes this country so great, is the fact that we are given the right to defend ourselves and our families. We're one of the only countries that haven't taken the right, David. As the laws become more draconian, Alex, on us, on the individual citizens, as they become more unconstitutional, they give more immunity to themselves. Think about the fact that we had Nixon and Clinton impeached, okay? Both of these were, people would say they were relatively minor charges. Nixon obstructed justice and Clinton committed perjury, okay? That's what they were impeached for. That was a pattern back then. Now they're saying, don't touch me. And of course, under Clinton, you had the, F, uh, the CIA director, John Deutsch, who did essentially the same thing. And he was not only indicted, but convicted and then pardoned by Bill Clinton. Don't That's tell right. me Let's that go Clinton further. know what was going on with us. Final question, 20 seconds from each. Now they're above the law. What's the next shoe to drop? I, I, What's going to be exact? Yeah, I'm sorry. So I agree that they're going to come after their political enemies. They've already been doing that. We've seen how they focus, and you know, no one is going to be exempt from this. And even the the left leftist media is now going, "Whoa, wait a minute! What have we done? Hillary's a monster. Everyone's protecting her, and they're I mean, they're complicit in this." Yeah, where are people's instincts, David Jacquard? Well, you know, Alex, uh, Thomas Drake, who I interviewed uh, once, he said in 2010, he said, why well, didn't realize at the time was that he was the opening shot in the Obama administration's war on whistleblowers. He said they were way beyond what Bush did. Bush merely threatened. He that's said right, that's he right. actually Jakari, came after the next shoot to drop? jail. What's the next shoot to drop? Censorship of the media. Censorship of the media. That, well, they don't really need it because they have enough of the media in their pocket. But for everybody else, Infowars.com, other ones out there, I'm pretty sure they'll come after us pretty hard. That's right. That's right, folks. We'll be back. Great job, crew. Stay with us. More callers. We'll get back to you. Yep, from the former United States of America in occupied FEMA Region 6, formerly, formerly Texas. I mean, it's really true. We're under world government. It's all being announced. The Brexit has come out. And they've said, look, we don't care if England leaves. We're just going to keep you in there. And we're going to dissolve nation armies and merge all the countries now so you can't ever escape. And uh, we are totalitarian. We are authoritarian. They're actually saying that. That's in the news. We've, we've written articles about it. We've, we've, we've covered it in the last week. Uh, it's just amazing. But see, tyrants always get delusional when the people start to say no and try to double and triple down. And I think the FBI director saying Hillary's above the law now, uh, coming out and saying we can't indict her. There's not enough evidence. No one would indict her when there's dozens of reasons to indict her. Lying, being caught lying, classified information, ordering the tops of the classified stuff cut off. This really is the demarcation line. I mean, I'm 100% in for Trump now. I halfway held my nose about a year ago, knowing he was a patriot and a good guy, but disagreeing with some of the stuff he did. Well, now he's a nationalist. He's got incredible courage. He's gone all out. They're coming after him with the controlled media. Uh, he's not getting any big establishment money, just more of an endorsement. I'm 100% now behind Donald Trump. I'm all in. And this is an epic moment, folks where it never in modern American history, really in 240 years, we celebrated our birthday yesterday, have I seen anything this naked. My head is spinning. Uh, my resolve is stronger than ever. It's the best of times, worst of times. People are waking up. Good things are happening. Uh, big announcement here, Cleveland just backed off for the second time and said, okay, you can have your rallies, you can have your, your pro-Trump events that I and Roger Stone and Jay Morgan and Diamonds and Silk and Ralph King and so many others uh, are going to be uh, speaking at United Women for Trump, Millennials for Trump, Students for Trump, Truckers for Trump, Tea Partiers uh, for Trump, Bikers for Trump, Vets for Trump, InfoWars, We Will Walk, Christians for Trump, Conservatives for Trump, Students from Trump. I mean, I just can't go through it all here. Uh, and that's up on InfoWars.com. That's from Citizens uh, you know, for Trump and uh, America First Unity Rally coming up. I'm going to be there in Cleveland. Uh, it's going to be epic. We've got uh, the big article on Infowars.com exclusive. Bill Clinton and the selling of U.S. security, the communist Chinese, the Russians, and others. Uh, but are they too corrupt to fail? Are they too tied in, too many accomplices? Why do the Clintons seem so invincible? The man who wrote the definitive book on the Clinton crime family 
and their war on women, Roger Stone, former campaign head uh, of Trump's campaign, his business partner is the head of the campaign. Uh, and of course, he's separate from the campaign, so he can operate freely, but he always gives us the key, uh, you know, next level info before it happens. So stonezone.com. Roger, thank you for joining us today. Alex, delighted to be with you as always. It, it's an extraordinary day. I must tell you, nine presidential campaigns, 40 years in American politics. I've never seen anything like this. We are obviously no longer a, a nation of laws. Now we're a nation of men. Uh, and uh, although the FBI director had this great reputation as a by the book law and order guy, obviously that is not the case. He said Hillary was careless. Judge Napolitano's made it clear in his analysis over and over again that criminal negligence here was more, more than sufficient for an indictment. Negligence, carelessness, I believe they're the same thing. So it, it boggles the mind that she's getting a pass, but I don't think she's going to get a pass from the voters. Why do you think Kumi didn't go after her? I mean, it, the, the, she got caught lying about it. She got caught cutting the tops off. She got caught manipulating. Foreign governments were in, you know, inside the servers. This is espionage. Uh, clearly, she was using it as a drop box to sell data and then claim she had plausible deniability. It's, it's very clear. I've talked to a lot of experts. They concur. But why, why, why is she too big to fail with the establishment? I guess the global elites cover for each other. I think that's what's going on here. And unfortunately, it turns out our FBI director is one of the global elites. I mean, what kind of a signal does this send to everyone else who's in government? What, what kind of a signal does this send to every American citizen? It, basically, it says violate any law you want. But if you're big enough, if you're influential enough, if you have enough money and you're well connected in the media, the law literally does not apply for you. Um, I think Donald Trump now has an opening to take the wood to Hillary. And I'd also say, Alex, the premium now is on selecting a running mate, a vice presidential running mate who is an attack dog, someone who can take uh, the case right to Bill and Hillary uh, and uh, expose not only the ins and outs of the email uh, scandal, but all of their scandals. How about you for vice president? You're a good attack dog. Uh, nobody, I could never pass the background check. Uh, I have too colorful a lifestyle. Now, we need somebody who has government experience, but someone who's a nationalist, someone who believes, as Trump does, that it's time to seal our borders, that it's time to repeal these ridiculous globalist trade deals that are destroying our job climate in this country, someone who will get our fiscal house in order, stop the bailouts for the crooks on Wall Street and, and generate jobs for the working people of America. Sure, clearly, Trump's clearly. Got some excellent choices out there, uh, and he's playing it very close to the vest. I don't know who he's going to pick, but I do know it will be a patriot. I do know it will be a nationalist. I know it will be somebody who adheres to the Trump agenda. Is Session still up at the top of the list? Well, I think he is still under consideration. I think Jeff Sessions is a good man, and I think I've said on your show that he'd be my personal choice. Uh, but I think I think uh, the Donald is casting a very wide net. He wants to find the very best person. Uh, but now he, there's a premium on someone who can really take the attack to the Clintons uh, because we know Donald Trump is not shy. Notice last week he said, folks, the system's rigged. It's completely rigged. So he foreshadowed what was going to happen here. Uh, and uh, I think that this is a blow to the Clintons. They may be celebrating the fact that she isn't going to go to prison, at least not for this. Uh, but this is a heavy burden to carry into a general election. Well, I mean, it is paradoxical that she's this evil, corrupt witch with this horrible background on record and all these crimes. And it's flagrantly obvious that she's being protected. It seems the the, the mission is somehow reach out to her constituents. But if you watch the interviews we do in Austin or in California or other places with Democrat voters, on average, these unfortunately are frighteningly ignorant people. I mean, they don't even know what the July 4th is. They don't even know what the three branches of government are. They just know, hey, there's some woman and I feel powerful if I cast my vote for a woman in some type of group think. How do you reach people that I don't think are as informed or awake as Helen Keller when she was a child? Uh, you know, she had such a great human spirit, she could actually be reached out to, even though she was, you know, blind and deaf. I mean, how do you get through to a zombie? I, I don't understand it. <clears throat> well, the good news is I don't think Hillary supporters are monolithic. I think the ripest target are uh, a third of the Bernie Sanders supporters 
who oppose these globalist trade deals, who uh, oppose the Iraq war, who are oppose the, uh, the two-party duopoly that has brought this country to the brink of disaster. Well, exactly. Like, How could a thinking person vote for Hillary? <clears throat> well, I don't think the people who are voting for her are thinking people. That, you, you've made that point. I think they're zombies. Uh, but uh, the question is, I think we have more supporters at the end of the day than they do. Roger, I've been asking the questions here. Uh, I mean, I think Donald Trump's just getting better and better, hitting her so hardcore. But what he's saying is all true. When you talk about taking the wood to Hillary, how does Donald, I mean, I mean, we know he's his own man, but if you're advising him, uh, how do you take the wood to Hillary? How do you really take the gloves off and put brass knuckles on? Well, the best news, of course, is we're going to have multiple debates, and there is no better place for a confrontation uh, with the wicked witch of the West than, than in those debates. Trump is a brawler. Therefore, nothing is off limits here, whether it is the Clinton's epic abuse of women because Bill is a sexual predator and Hillary has uh, played the role of covering up his crimes by bullying and intimidating and threatening his victims, or whether it is the epic corruption of the Clinton Foundation, or whether it is the fact that Bill sold this country's security out. I have a long piece on InfoWars today, an exclusive piece. Uh, when we can talk about that another day, because I think the news here trumps everything, but the Clintons are guilty of treason. I mean, they have literally traded the uh, technology regarding the targeting of our missile system. Well, this is what it's all about, actually. Let's skip this network break and let's talk about the article that's I'm going to move to the top of InfoWars.com and retweeted it at Real Alex Jones and on Facebook. Everybody, just because you're patriots, libertarians, conservatives, veterans, you know about the 90s and the missile secrets, the MIRV technology, the boost systems, the, the targeting systems, the whole nine yards uh, to have our ICBMs, the best in the world given to the chi -coms, totally insane, just to show how brazen and crazy the Clintons are, we need to get this article out because the general public doesn't remember this or doesn't know about it. So let's talk about the treason of the Clintons. Let's get into your article. Part one is the Russians, part two is the Chinese. Well, uh, it, it's really extraordinary, Alex. Uh, I don't think this got very much coverage at the time. The real irony here is that rather than indicting or I should say, rather than impeaching Bill Clinton for dallying with Monica Lewinsky in the Oval Office, he should have been impeached and convicted, and then I think subsequently charged with treason um, for these two transactions. In essence, uh, he ignored U.S. law to uh, trade high-level technology to the Russians, but even more egregious, he essentially took $300,000 in illegal Chinese campaign contributions passed through uh, Johnny Chung uh, in return for their th a three-party transaction in which he, he sold the actual technology that targets our missiles, the accuracy of our mix missiles, to the Chinese government. By any other name, this is treason. Now, it's a long piece uh, and, uh, you know, 2,500 words. Uh, that's why I was happy to give it to InfoWars, because I think it, it needs the public exposure. I, I, I intend to come back and recycle this yet again, because I'm afraid we get kind of wiped out by the FBI news today. Sure, let me ask you this question, because it all fits together. It's all in the same soup. Why does, I know there's different power structures and things, but why do the elite allow... The Clintons to do things nobody else can do. I mean, the nuclear reactors to North Korea that are used to build A-bombs when they could have given them reactors that don't do that. I mean, uh, what, beyond the Clintons, who do you think they really represent? Because a lot of smart money says it's mainly the communist Chinese, a little bit of Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, as a second player. But, uh, I mean, it's just, why do they work against the U.S. interests so much? Why are they out to get us? You know, it's the bitter clinger comments. I mean, why? They already run the country. Why are they out to get us? I don't think they have any loyalty to anyone. I don't think they're loyal to the Chinese, nor are they loyal to the United States. They are all about the money. They're all about the acquisition of wealth and power. So uh, in truth, um, you know, they will do anything for cash. That is the epic story of the Clinton Foundation, which is not a charitable organization, but a slush fund for grifters. Which is sure, as sure. We so? Now why know, do our elites allow them to operate like this? Because the mainstream media does not rouse the populace, and because the people don't know, therefore there's no pressure on our institutions to bring them to justice. 
the the story of uh, of the uh, treasonous activities in both regard to the Russians uh, and the Chinese, and as you point out, the North Koreans has never gotten the kind of media coverage that it would require to rouse the people. I firmly believe if people knew about these things, um, they would be angry and they would act. That That's the strength of InfoWars and Breitbart and Daily Caller and all the other important alternative media that did not exist in the 80s when the Clintons perpetrated these crimes the first time. So, um, you know, the Clintons response to all of this is, well, that's old news. You know what? No news is old if nobody heard it the first time. To them, it's new news. And well, uh, let me tell you, I, I see BMs that can destroy our whole country and world that our crazy elite, the Clintons gave to them. That is big news that they're going to be back in and they've helped fund ISIS, Al Qaeda. The, these people are pure evil. What is on your radar? Because I've got a bunch of questions. Uh, I want to talk about how Trump's doing, where this is going, uh, what other attacks you expect, the polling numbers. There's a lot to cover <laughs> one at a time uh, here. But, but what else uh, do you want to uh, get out there to the audience, Roger? Well, I do. Uh, we have a big victory today, as you announced at the beginning. We uh, we have finally prevailed over the city of Cleveland. We have our permits uh, after going to court and being represented by the liberal ACLU to do so. We have knocked down uh, their restrictions on free speech. Uh, we don't need to uh, bring the duct tape to Cleveland and put it over our mouths to uh, demonstrate the outrageousness of their anti-free speech position. So. The rally at which you are speaking, I am speaking, many other patriots are speaking, is July 18th at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning at the uh, the Settlers Landing Park. Uh, we now have a permit from the city of, uh, of Cleveland. We are scrambling to raise the money to pay for the staging that is required by the city, uh, the public address system we will need, the marshals, and all of the sure, other- How much money do you need? We're going to have to raise at least $30,000 to pay for everything soup to nuts. As you know, we stopped our fundraising when uh, when the city uh, stopped negotiating with us. Now we have to gin it back up. Uh, well, let me just say this. I, I've already signed a contract, and I went ahead and doubled down two contracts, uh, $30,000 plus $5,000 for the banner uh, in, in Cleveland, and then $30,000 plus $5,000 for the banner because uh, we're doing two banners. One's InfoWars, one is Hillary for Prison. Uh, we're going to mainly follow the Hillary for president one, but the InfoWars is the backup one. Sometimes the banners tear uh, after you know a few flights. But, but we're going to have planes for four days in the air, two days at each event. Hillary for president, big giant banners. That's a seventy thousand dollar investment. I'm taking all the profits from the Hillary for president shirts uh, and putting it into that. But we need to sell the shirts. They're nineteen ninety five. We're selling them at full price, not five ninety five like we were before. Five dollars. Uh, that's at cost. I cannot do this, folks, without your support. I've already signed the contracts, uh, so uh, either the money comes in or somebody gets laid off, but that's not going to happen. I know the Patriots are going to come through. Buy your Hillary for prison shirts at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. But I'm doubling down for my country, my kids, everything, Roger. Um, I'm, I'm putting a 10000 down right now because this isn't like a political deal where it's limited, right? Because it's a free speech event. Can I give 10000 is correct. There are no limitations whatsoever on what an individual can give. Uh, I've got to start hitting the phones very hard to help. Okay, raise well, listen, the money. Uh, today, uh, you want a wire, whatever, $10,000 from InfoWars towards this event. And, and again, this gets back to Trump. Uh, he, he obviously, the big money's not going to come to him. He hasn't even asked for it. He's turned it down, the Adelson money, you know, to put uh, Genrich on the ticket. He's a hero for that alone. Uh, hopefully that, that holds. But but doesn't Trump need to go ahead and put some of the big money down first? Start to put down fifty something million of his own. But should he just all in like a hundred million to cause a domino effect, break the ice? Uh, look, he put forty million dollars into his race for the nomination, uh, and, and that ain't chopped liver. Uh, and he certainly has the wherewithal to do what is necessary, which is why I'm not I'm not nervous. In fact, like you, I kind of like that he hasn't taken the uh, the elite money with the strings on it. Uh, the greatest single attribute that he has going into this election is his independence. The fact that he can't be bought, he can't be bullied, he can't be bossed. He answers only to the American people, uh, and he just will never adopt the globalist agenda. So, uh, Alex, I thank you for your generosity. I think this is going to be a great rally. But the, the real message for all the Trump supporters out there is show of strength. We need a show of strength. Our rally is a peaceful 
demonstration. Let me be clear. Let me interrupt you, Roger, because this is so important. Folks, okay, Roger Stone works 18 hours a day. He's got a really bad cold today. He's still on air with us because he knows this is history happening. He says he's never been involved. He's been involved in like eight, you know, eight different elections. He's seen nothing like this, okay? And this is history. That's why I'm all in. It's why I'm spending every amount of money comes in this year on reporters and crew. Usually I take some profit and try to put some money back. I'm everything in this year because it's my kids, it's my country, it's my future. And I know you know that. But I'm telling you, beyond sending money to help pay for this event they tried to ban three times and there's been lawsuits and we've battled them and all the rest of it, everywhere you've got to get in the streets, everywhere you've got to run for office, everywhere you've got to call in to talk radio and put up YouTubes because we've got to get outside the Liberty Box and educate all these other folks very aggressively. But please, don't thank me when you call up. I want to thank you for your support, listeners. And I want to say, get your butts to Cleveland. I don't care if it's this one rally on this morning or whatever it is. They're trying to shut our free speech down everywhere. We got to use it or lose it. This is a war. And this is a fight. Okay? And so thank you for buying our products. Because listen, you're only going to see bigger results out of it. What you put in, you're going to get back very aggressively deployed. But, but Roger, how do folks go and give donations right now to help pay for this rally? Uh, we'll be posting uh, uh, the uh, site earlier uh, today. If you go to uh, CTRAG, C-T-R-A-G dot org, uh, we'll be accepting contributions there. That's the Committee to Restore America's Greatness. And we will transfer whatever we, we uh, raise to pay for this rally. That is our immediate goal. But look, I'm very excited about it. We've got an all-star lineup. I'm trying to get Ann Coulter to speak. Uh, Diamond and Silk will be there. Uh, this is going to be a, a great patriotic rally. And again, I stress, this is a peaceful demonstration. We know the Black Lives Matter and the move on uh, thugs paid for by George Soros will be there and will attempt in every possible way to incite violence so that the mainstream media can then blame that violence on Donald Trump's uh, and his supporters. So come to Cleveland, but be prepared to turn the other cheek uh, and show through numbers the support for Donald Trump. And I'm going to be there, folks. Stand with us now. In, in, in closing, Hillary's a monster. She's a gangster. We can't, nobody can complain at Trump for what he's done money-wise. He's already put in 40-something million. He's putting his life on the line. I really think this witch can't handle going up against him in debates. I think she's going to try to kill him. I mean, I look at photos of her and the way she's acting lately. She looks like a psychotic monster. Yeah, I think she has a dual personality. Uh, I think the uh, book by uh, Gary Byrne, the uh, Secret Service agent, which the Clintons are working overtime to suppress. They've been leaning on the networks. They've been leaning on the cable networks not to interview him, not to uh, not to uh, publicize. They banned you on three cable networks. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, you know it, what can I say? It, it is uh, it is outrageous that we would somehow think that what he, what this agent who served his country has to say is somehow less important or less credible than two of the biggest liars in American history, Bill and Hillary Clinton. But uh, if you listen to what Agent Byrne says, this woman is bipolar. She has two personalities. StoneZone.com, Roger Stone, thank you for coming on, even though you're under the weather, my friend. You're a tough guy. And we really appreciate you. Uh, we look forward to speaking to you again soon. In 10 seconds, is, is how's Trump's spirits? They look pretty strong. He's in, he's in great mood. I talked to him yesterday, and he's feeling good. Like all Americans, he's outraged by the uh, fix of Hillary's legal. It's incredible. Let me say bye to you during the break. Roger Stone's our guest. Uh, we'll be back. We're on the Just briefly, I was talking to um, Roger Stone during the break about the fact that we have to raise like $32,000 just to have like a four or five hour rally down there. Look, there's going to be massive media coverage of this. It's right across from the RNC's meeting. The George Soros people aren't going to get permits. They're going to do whatever they want and run around and, you know, attack and spit on things and just do what they generally do. Because they serve the foreign multinational globalists. That's why they claim they're anti-establishment. They are the filth of the earth. But they make them get PA systems, porta potties and pay for the police. That is wrong. It should be in the police budget to take care of big rallies and big demonstrations around key times like this. But it's libertarians and it's patriots and it's conservatives that try to not cause a disturbance. But I'll tell you something. When I get told I can't have a demonstration but other people can, I'm going to have it regardless.
Well, the good news is they've backed off because of two different lawsuits, and they claim this is it. So that's why I'm going to this. I'm going to be part of this because it's a symbol of free speech. And the globalists are coming after free speech. But beyond that, I've got all sorts of tricks up my sleeve that are legal and lawful for Cleveland. But we're going to put out hundreds of thousands of leaflets. We're going to do other things. We're going to have aircraft in the sky. And believe me, Hillary will go to the level, we've had this before with the, the Democrats especially, try to block us doing things like putting aircraft in the sky. That just becomes a bigger issue. See, people think you fight tyranny and then you get defeated at one level in one battle you've lost. No, you learn about the enemy, you expose what they're doing, you show people they're tyrants. That's the beginning of the end. Like the corrupt EU saying, we're not going to allow a vote, we're just taking you over. Well, in the end, people started backlashing against that. Only submitting to tyranny is how you lose. Resisting it, you always end up winning. It may take five years, it may take ten years. It may take six months, but the worm is turning. Uh, just to give people the good news, InfoWars is one of the main focal points, not just here in the U.S., but all over the world, of resistance to globalism. And we've gone from being ridiculed, demonized, attacked, uh, just, just you know, totally lied about, to more and more, especially in other nations, it's not just populist or right-wingers that like us. It's true liberals, and it's, it's, it's nationalists that are just common sense all over the world. From Brazil to South Africa, from Nigeria to Japan, from Russia to Germany, from the UK to Canada, from Mexico to Chile to Australia, InfoWars, in many cases, is more popular per capita in foreign nations. A couple African nations were like in the top 20 and stuff. It's crazy. Uh, so let me tell you something. People are listening worldwide. And Americans, to a certain extent, are in this bubble. Americans have the lowest level of passports except for North Korea. Americans, on average, do have the fattest. And I'm not saying folks that are overweight. I've been overweight before, too. But I'm just saying, on average, the fattest, dumbest, most lethargic people. Doesn't mean we're all bad, but statistically, we are at the bottom of the barrel. But that's starting to change because once you hit bottom, there's nowhere else to go but up, right? Historically. So I want to commend all of you for your support. I want to commend you all for your prayers. That's what I really need. Um, because I, I'm in such a fight with the globalists. I know the stakes. I know how real it is. And I just get sick at my stomach. Like I'm not working hard enough. Like I'm not doing enough. Like I'm not, um, sometimes at like five or six, I got to do more work. And I want to, my spirit wants to, my flesh is weak. And I'm just like dizzy. I'm so exhausted and I just got more to do and I know I could fight the enemy and I could put out a viral video and I could really expose this and I've got to learn to just go, I give it to God, this is all I can do, just turn loose. Or I'm going to you know, have, you know, have a heart attack by the time I'm 55 and I don't want that. So my kids deserve me to be healthy, but I'm, I, all I'm saying is don't call up telling me how great I am because it, it, it's the opposite of that. My, my, my guts and everything are like fight harder and I'm, I'm very angry at myself. And that's not a listening going, oh, Alex, you're doing good. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm really telling you how I feel because I know how bad these people are. I know how evil they are. It really freaks me out. I mean, look at that photo that's up on Real Alex Jones on Twitter again. This is, I'm convinced, the most evil photo of Hillary I've ever seen. And you really look at her. I look at this photo of her, and man, I, I actually, my, my heart flutters. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Those eyes tell you everything you need to know. Man, she enjoys power. She enjoys lies. She enjoys suppression. She treats everybody like crap. She doesn't give tips. She doesn't let you look her in the eye. She is an arrogant monster pig. She hates us so much, folks. Oh, my God. I think she might cause a nuclear war or something. I just, there's something about her. I think, I look at Kim Jong-un and I also have the same feeling, but not as bad. It's just, oh, it's so, because they're so soft and weak, but because they're in a bully position, they can get away with anything. Oh, like a vampire. Um, briefly, I'm already putting planes in the sky for four days. 
over the RNC and DNC. I looked at blimps. Those are just way too much. We're talking half million dollar commitment for a big blimp. And then, and of course, that's like a multi-month contract. They go to all these different cities. They just don't do it where you go to one city. Can you imagine a blimp going around saying Hillary for president? Oh, that'd be the biggest thing ever. It's like Scarface. The world is yours. Instead, you're going to prison, Hillary. A Goodyear blimp. Of course, I know they'd get involved and block that. We've already got a couple backup Air Forces ready with the more primitive banners that if they try to block us with this group or something, you know, we'll just shift to another backup plan. But the point is, we need to sell a lot of the Hillary for President t-shirts to pay for that. But regardless, I'm all in. Infowarsstore.com. Our 4th of July mega special is going to be extended throughout the week. I'm only able to do this a couple times a year, but they've allowed us because of all the globalist talk of food shortages and food price increases, which I hope aren't the case, but we're preparing you know, for the worst, hoping for the best here. we got 20 to 40% off. Uh, all the great storable food there at InfoWarsStore.com. We also have 20% off Survival Shield Nation Iodine and the Good X2 that blocks the bad halogens. has changed my life. Alexa Pure Water Filters are 20% off. Alexa Pure Air Filters are 20% off. A lot of other specials as well. Check them all out at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. And it is your purchase of these products that funds the operation. Plus, these are things everybody needs Going into these very uncertain times, patriots need to be self-sufficient. The enemy bets their whole game plan on us being dependent on them. And prepping now is absolutely essential. It's gone from a possibility of collapse to a probability to a certainty. It just depends on how bad it'll be. But worldwide, it's already in full swing. We're already in a depression in most areas. It's just not equally distributed. You can call toll-free to ask any questions about specials or to order via the phone as well. 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. Okay. I appreciate Denise and uh, Sergeant B and Shane. Everybody else holding. I'm going to go to you right now. Thank you for holding. Denise from Illinois, what do you think of the FBI director admitting she did all these horrible things but says they can't indict her? Uh, just to point out the flags in the uh, Comey speech on both sides of them, the blue flag that say federal department, the word federal is upside down and backwards. So between their false flags and their theatrics, they're getting pretty sloppy. They don't even have the flags right. You don't really have a press conference. There's no you know, media. There are no flashbulbs going off. And if Hillary becomes president and 150 million lose their jobs, I think we're going to have nothing better to do than walk the streets of Washington. That's a good point that, that, that I didn't hear any press in there. But they called it a statement in the press conference. More and more, they tell the press what to do. They get their questions beforehand. More and more, we act like a Soviet nation. Yeah, and if you look at those flags, who who bought these flags? <laughs> but uh, talk a little prophecy now. As far as Hillary, she's president. I, I you know I can't put out there the fact that Antichrist could be a woman. That's all I got to say. Uh, and I appreciate your call. You know, everybody always says that every new evil leader is the Antichrist and Obama's the Antichrist and the rest of this. The, the, the Bible says there are many Antichrists, the Antichrist spirit. Then there is the Antichrist. But I think when you're selling baby parts and putting baby flavoring and soft drinks and selling us out to the communist Chinese, just trying to break up families, I mean, these are evil people. These are evil, evil, evil people. I don't think there's any doubting that. And, and there are more and more signs in government of the wheels coming off. And look, the globalists want a civil war. And as I've gotten a little more sophisticated in the last few years, last decade or so, really, I realize we got big problems with government. But it's big mega corporations that have taken control of our government that want totalitarianism that have set it up. So instead of just blaming the TSA, when most of them are just workers that want a paycheck, and buy into this false narrative. Some of them are bad. It's come out. We should blame Congress that leaves our borders open, flies in all these foreigners, doesn't check them, but then checks us. This is slave training. So let's blame Congress instead of just blaming the TSA. And I say blame them too. And when it gets down to the police, yeah, we can all see footage out of 330 million Americans, bad cops and corruption and problems and go after it. But just making it the issue and, and, and making... You know, uh, shooting a cop while they pump gas or change a tire, that's how you fix things. That'll show them. That's all globalist garbage to absolutely bring this country into a civil war and brand the civil war as citizens running around burning things and overturning police cars.
if there's a civil war in this country that the globalists start, we need to think about the big brokers, the globalists, the technicians, the Ford Foundation, the, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Endowment. You know, they want a war. I'm not calling for anything violent. I'm just, we need to identify the, the collaborators, the globalists, the people that have come in and taken control. The George Soros of the world. Who are trying to start a civil war in this country and who have successfully started them all over the world. Let's go ahead and go to Sergeant B from Texas. You're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. Um, I want to put a call out to everyone listening. We need everyone out there who has any skills in multimedia, audio, video, PowerPoint, slideshows, you name it, need a campaign and start putting out a list of everyone who's been prosecuted for the same crimes Hillary committed with the quote by Director Comey saying, no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case because it's obviously bull. Right in U.S. Code 793, it is stated in multiple paragraphs, very wordy. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it does state very clearly what he said in that, in that press conference today, that she did commit these crimes, and it does state, shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than 10 years or both. That's right. This needs to be viral. It needs to be put out in every single media, and it needs to be done now. By the way, Joe Beggs, who's going to the border today, just ran her earlier when uh, Leanne was in studio, and said, look, we should start a meme basically showing all the people that have been charged for the exact same thing that Hillary did and do a poll, basically, of prosecutors to get their response. And we know what the answer is going to be. No, you would always be indicted for this. But that's a great point. We should go through and show all the people that have been indicted for a lot less. So that's a great point. That's exactly it. And it's not just enough to, for us to talk to each other who are already knowledgeable about this. We need to reach out to these liberal idiots who don't have any concept of the rule of law. And we need to reach out to them and bang them over the head with this knowledge and get them to understand why it's wrong. She didn't break rules, she broke the federal law. Well, look, I know all these idiot so-called leftists are really a bunch of moron fascists, but I want to say something to them. Communist China has killed over 100 million of its people. Mao killed 80-something million. Women and men are slaves. They have absolutely no rights unless they're in the party. It's total evil. No environmental standards, no nothing. But you're too busy hating America to ever realize how hellish Venezuela or China are. And so they don't care if Hillary sold out to the imams and sold out to these Gulf states that murder women and murder homosexuals. They just don't care. I don't think they care. They like the fact that they think they're on a winning team, even though they're schmucks being destroyed by Hillary. So I don't know how we reach out to them. I don't know how we get them to turn around. They are just, they are just horrible people. We need to fight with the info war, exactly like your name is state. It needs to be an info war. We need them to be knowledgeable because that's the biggest problem in this country right now is ignorance. People are ignorant of the rules. They're ignorant of the law. And they think that when they see CNN, Comedy Central, and all these other stupid little media sources saying it's okay, they believe it because they're just plain ignorant. We need videos we need that just state, no. you've been conned. You're in a trance. Comedy Central isn't your friend. They're lying to you. They're politically paid to do all this. Stewart's brother runs the New York Stock Exchange. This is a scam, kind of like the end of Running Man when they go, Damon is lying to you, and then show the lies. It's time to do it. That's right, absolutely. And it's not just enough. It, even if people out there, like my, my call out was for people with these skills, even if you don't have those skills, people need to start having these conversations with people in the grocery store, at libraries, wherever you go. Start asking people. If you know somebody who is a Hillary supporter, ask them. Arm yourself with the knowledge of these other cases where people have been convicted and ask these people, why is it okay that these people are being convicted, but she doesn't have to be? That she can be president. In 60 seconds, what would you say to one of these zombies to wake them up? I would ask them. I would say exactly like I just said. Say, look, we have multiple cases. I, I, you can't even have a full list of all the people who have been prosecuted. These people have been prosecuted for the same laws that she violated. Why is it okay for her, but not for them? Why is it that she can be president, but they have to be in jail? 
I, I handled classified material myself when I was in the Army. If I did what she did, I would be in a federal prison right now. It would have been an open and shut case. But she gets to be considered as president of the United States. That's because the globalists want a dictator. They want someone in who's an elected dictator. And, 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 and people think, elected dictator? Yeah. A dictator just ignores the laws. They may be elected, but they begin to do whatever they want. And they're setting the stage for Hillary to be a true dictator. That's exactly what the former senior service agent said, uh, high level. He said, look, she wants a socialist dictatorship. And the average idiot hears that and goes, oh, good, I'll get free stuff. No, you'll be made a domesticated slave of the system. God bless you, Sergeant B. I appreciate your call. And it's not the Republicans are great either. That's why the Republican leadership has been against Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the takedown of America. They take down your law in front of you and set the precedent that they can do anything they want whenever they want. Shane in Oregon, you're up next. Then we're going to talk to Justin X, Lana, Paul, and others. You're listening to the GCN Radio Network. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. Please don't take the websites for granted. Please don't take the podcast for granted. Please don't take us being on this local station for granted because massive censorship is already taking place. Massive restrictions are already being launched. We're in serious trouble. I'm going to go right back to your calls, but I want to just say something historical that's a known fact. Every historian, every sociologist, anthropologist knows this. And I know most of you know this. A lot of folks I talk to aren't aware of this because they don't teach history anymore, real history. They just teach a bunch of guilt and hate the West because the globalists are bringing in a technocracy that the Renaissance and the ideas of the West threaten. Not that the West was ever anywhere near perfect. My God, the West has done some of the worst stuff, okay? But we've also done some of the best stuff. That's a fact. Those that dare greatly also stoop down pretty low. <laughs> so I don't lionize the West, I just know it has boldly done things for liberty and the expansion of human freedom that nobody else has done. There's been a lot of other great teachings from other parts of the world, a lot of amazing stuff from Asia, you name it. Uh, but at the end of the day, the West is the best, to quote Jim Morrison. The ideas are, the intellectual ideas, the open freedom, the people that actually delivered freedom instead of talking about it. And that's why the West is being killed. Beyond Westerners, the idea of the West is, is, is being gotten rid of by the globalists because it's in competition with them. Freedom or the American system, which was one of the greatest examples of that, the elites 100 years ago would openly write newspapers. We've got to get rid of the American system. It can make anybody rich and powerful. It can make anybody successful. It makes people independent. It makes all these different groups out there that can do whatever they want and centralize control. Robber barons don't like that. And so these globalists at CFR meetings and Bilderberg meetings and Club of Rome meetings and Davos meetings, they get together and they put out press statements about, we need to just dominate the public and openly make them slaves. Yeah, the public's all dumb, which you help make dumb. You sit up there all arrogant. Most of you didn't even make your own money. You got it five, six generations back on average. That's on average. The average elitist today got their money five, six generations ago. Very few actually made it themselves. And so many of the elites, you see like Bill Gates were actually given all of it as well. He's a total front guy. So what I'm getting at is this. Don't think Hillary is invincible because she thinks she's invincible and wants you to think she's invincible. That's her own delusion, which is a con game that if, if it's successful enough, might actually work on you. But this is megalomania, okay? Like the more success and power I get, the more insecure I get, and the more I'm afraid to make a mistake because I don't want to hurt people. That's a normal grown-up thing. As you get more power and more responsibility, you get more careful. Not with elites in history when they're megalomaniacs. As they get more power, they feel more invincible. So don't think for all their arrogance that they won't be defeated. My only concern is when they've dominated their domestic populations and have been found to be above the law, Almost every case, they start wars with other people. And three times in the last 200 years, they've done it with Russia. Three times. Say which one about Russia, it hadn't been taken over yet. And just it's just where empires go to start giant wars. 
Now there's nuclear weapons. Now our elite is allied with the Chinese. The Russians aren't stupid. They know there's a sneak attack plan with both countries to attack Russia. And I'm not lionizing Russia. I'm just saying it hasn't been taken over except by the communist revolution, but still not completely. And then they overthrew that. So I'm really worried about Hillary, folks. Once she's got full control of the U.S., you watch. She's going to turn her eyes outward. And as much as I kind of want her to leave us alone and move on, it's going to come back on us, folks. You think Hitler was bad? Hillary is a complete lunatic. They've got nothing but women now running the State Department and, 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 and most of the decisions at the Pentagon. And it's weird. None of them have been in combat. They all wear these fancy dresses. They get up there and make weird comments about how good they are at killing people. And, and then they just shoot their mouths off. I mean, I, I just... It just reeks of nuclear war, reeks of defeat, reeks of hell. I mean, you've got a bunch of whacked out weirdos on a bunch of drugs and crap. I mean, I can look at Hillary and Samantha Powers and all of them and tell you, those women are on drugs if I've ever seen it. And they have got to be brought, they've got to be stopped, people. We've got to stop them. We're going to take a few more calls, hand the baton to Watson. I'm just telling you, you are we've got to stop these here. people. They're megalomaniacs Visit before they stop themselves by blowing everything up. All right, going right to your phone calls. I love how Trump's calling it a rigged system and it's all a fraud. Because that's true. So you have to overthrow the entire corrupt system that's come in and taken over our country. You don't just debate with it and play games with it. You admit it's rigged, but Bernie Sanders won't do that. He's going to let Hillary rob him. Let's go to Shane in Oregon. Shane, thanks for holding her on the air worldwide. Uh, thank you for taking the call, Alex. Thank you. I'm a, uh, I I'm, I'm a fairly new listener. I've just found you about a year and a half ago, but uh, I thank the good Lord that I did. I listen to you religiously. I, I drive for a living, so I listen to you uh, all day while you're on live, and then, uh, and then I find you on YouTube that I've been watching. Well, thanks for putting up with me, brother. Um, first, I, I just want to say thank you again for everything you do. Your reporters are uh, out of this world. They are. Everything that you guys are putting out there is just... Um, I mean, I can't even explain how urgent this information is to get it out to the people. And um, I'm a 13-year uh, uh, veteran of the United States Army, and um, I, I want to just say real quick, I had a lot of stuff I wanted to touch on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Really, Take your time. I think this is really important that uh, we, the people, we need to stand behind Mr. Trump and, uh, you know, really, really support him because, He's basically put his entire life and family on well, the line. I, I think there's a good chance they're going to kill him. I, I, I'd say it's about a 50% chance he's, they're going to kill him. Yeah, they're so arrogant, absolutely. they'll blow his plane up in front of everybody. I'm telling you, they'll do anything. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, I feel that same way. Uh, but, uh, you know, we the people just really need to stand up and support him because he is the only hope that we have to country to become great By the way, it just hit me. I think they want a civil war. They might kill Trump to start it. Oh, there's no end to these people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that one of the callers touched on something earlier, and I think uh, Jakari also touched on it, that, you know, that what we're being fed, basically spoon-fed and, and being dumbed down through our, our, you know, mainstream media, that's all the people, uh, you know, they, they think that's out there. And so it's our job as the info warriors to you know, uh, put the information out there and help educate people. Because I know since I found you, um, I've been, you know, baby stepping with, with my family and friends and at least getting getting them interested because that's half the battle, just to catch someone's interest. Um, Absolutely. And, and then as more tyranny comes in, unfortunately, down the road, they'll even wake up more. And, I, and baby steps are great sometimes the family because they're hard to wake up. I'd hit people right in the face with the truth and just say, listen, you understand the globalists are taking this country over right now, and they're trying to end our prosperity by design. We need to get involved to bring back uh, just a basic system of Americana that, that produced the wealth and the success we had. God bless you, Shane. Good to hear from you. Let's take another call here. Let's talk to Justin X in the live free or die state of New Hampshire. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I felt compelled to call today because just like you, I, I have a powerful, sickening feeling in my gut. And uh, I don't know, it's not good. Last time I had this feeling was I was out of the country during the Boston bombing. As I'm flying in, I'm looking at the Golden State Bridge, or, yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge, and I just get this sickening feeling in my gut. 
And uh, come to find out, the people in Boston cheered the people that were dragging them out of their houses. So uh, it, really, the only, the only real solution is individual non-compliance with the edicts of self appointed I agree. I agree. And, and more and more, we just, you know, we have to support local government and people when they're doing the right thing. But when systems are under globalist control and not, we have to absolutely not comply. It's now reached that point. I mean, yes, because we can hope for Trump to change things for us. But just like you just said, I question if there's even going to be an election. Um, they're moving quickly. Um, it, it, it's now, now just, I don't know, I just have this feeling after seeing this, it's going to move exponentially. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, that's why I've said this. I've never said this in, you know, years of selling storable food. I've never said, now I believe you're going to actually need this for sure. I've never said, I, you know, I'm getting a bunch extra for me. I mean, I really believe that. I, I just have a sickening feeling. I like my, my gut is just get ready. Take care of your own family at this point. We have global combines that have taken control of most of the planet, who have successfully overthrown nation after nation, openly doing banker bail-ins in Europe, flooding the countries with five million foreigners, covering up their mass rapes, you name it. I've got articles here. We're in London. Islamicist uh, Muslim cab driver says it's against his religion to take blind man with a guide dog. And uh, the person tells him, well, it violates the Disabilities Act. He says, I don't care. And nothing will be done to him for that. They are above the law. They are gods. That's why they don't have to wear, they don't, they don't get searched by the TSA, you name it. And again, people say, well, you didn't used to be so Islamophobic. I didn't want to destabilize the Middle East and have a giant war. The point is they're bringing people in from the most backward third world hell pits where many women aren't even allowed out of the house. And then there's all these weird, sickening feminist groups out attacking me saying I'm Islamophobic with weirdo, like 18-year-old girls with their faces painted up saying I'm a feminist screaming to defend the Muslims. I mean, it, I just, it is literal mental suicide they're engaged in. It is, it is the opposite of, of logic. I don't understand how we manufactured such freak shows. And then we've got, I'm sure Paul's getting into this because it's his beat, you know, exposing it. Uh, you know, this uh, leader in Sweden saying, well, when our men rape women, it's bad, even though they're like less than 10% of the rapes. But when the Muslims do it, it's just their culture. Uh, th th this is where we're going. Now, we've got some calls here that have been holding a while. It's why I held over so I could go to those. Uh, but I'm just going to talk to Paul and Stormy and Lana. In fact, Lana's here in a moment. But briefly, it's time to get prepared. That's why we're running a special 20 to 40% off on this super high quality, super fresh, last 25 year storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. We're going to extend the Independence Day sale through this week because it's about being independent. 20% off on water filtration systems, on air filtration systems, and so much more at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Also, when you buy the Hillary for Prison shirts, we have a new limited edition out. That will go to pay for the airplanes that we're going to have with big banners over the RNC and DNC with giant banners that say Hillary for a prison. And it doesn't mean InfoWars is going to save the world. You you buying the shirt won't, won't, won't be the straw that breaks the camel's back of tyranny. But let me tell you, somebody will push us over the edge. And it's resistance is victory. So InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And I want to thank you all for your support, but even more important, Send out the links to the podcast. Send out the video links to the live show. Tell people about that local AM or FM affiliate you listen to. Become a sponsor at a local station. Support the sponsors. Send 100 bucks to the station. Send links to the videos and articles and information to friends and family. It's an info war. They admit we're one of the most prominent groups hurting them. Those drudge, info wars, and down the line from there. We are now the symbol of independent, liberty-based, populist media worldwide. We're changing the world. Nigel Farage used to come on like 15 years ago. And he came on just a few years ago as well. And he admitted, wow, you're really big over here in England. You're getting us a lot of UKIP members. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of you. We're all in this together. So don't thank me. I want to thank you. We're in this together. Paul Watson, a lot going on. Tell us what's coming up today. Obviously, you're talking about Hillary. I mean, I see this as a the elite breaking away from justice completely in a declaration of independence against the rule of law, a declaration of dictatorship, Paul. Well, it's completely brazen, Alex. And I mean, the, the meeting itself with Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton, a lot of people speculated that Bill Clinton did that because he could. He didn't even care about the optics. He didn't care how bad it would look. And, you know, this is what you talked about earlier, the brazenness of the elite. You know, there was a tweet from Hillary Clinton back in January 
There should be no bank too big to fail and no individual too big to jail. Well, that's been disproven today. You had Comey lay out for 15 minutes how she had broken the law. And we've got numerous examples from past cases about how people did exactly this. Mishandling of classified information. They were punished for it. So he laid it out how she broke the law and then concluded that she was above the law. And I mean, this is scary because people are already out saying, well, if the highest elected representatives in the country are immune from the law or above the law, then why should I pay my taxes? Why should I follow the law? So it's, it, it could lead, I mean, eventually down the line to some form of civil unrest. That's how that Mexico bad. had super low crime 50 years ago and degenerated. The public sees the government not following the law. That's what makes civilizations fall, Paul. That's a good point. No, exactly. They see that the highest elected representatives in the land have no appreciation for and are protected from the law. So how do they behave? How do they respond? We've already seen it. There's an article up on InfoWars where I collated some of the comments just off Twitter and some of the websites of people responding to this. Absolute unremittent fury from people saying that this is the end of the line for them. They've tolerated enough and this is just a step too far. But, you know, I'm going to get into the, the previous cases when I, when I get up and host the show in a little while. Numerous cases where people have done exactly this, mishandle classified information, not even deliberately. Remember, that's not the standard that she's being held to, not deliberately. And yet we have Comey coming out with this quote. Again, quote, to be clear, this is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. To the contrary, those individuals are often subject to security or administrative sanctions. So again, they're subject to misdemeanor charges, fines, imprisonment. He warns him. He said, listen, just because she's not getting in trouble doesn't mean you won't. They're even telling the government she's above exactly. the law and that they aren't. Oh, that's crazy, man. It's completely out of control. I mean, even, even a lot of people on the left, from what I've seen, are just absolutely flabbergasted by this. The one crumb of comfort, I guess, for Trump, which some people have pointed out, is that you know, 2016 is the year of complete rebellion against the status quo. This is not only going to fire up his base, but it's also going to enrage those independents who are leaning Republican to vote for Trump. It's going to influence the Bernie Sanders supporters, 50 percent of whom said they wouldn't vote for Hillary. Well, here's the good news. Trump doesn't even know what an email server is. That's kind of a good thing. He like his emails handed to him, printed off. He knows how to use a Twitter. But... but. <laughs> Don't worry, he won't have any secret servers because he's not a big tech guy. I tell you, Hillary is a true slime ball. I want to take a call or two and then hand the baton to you, Paul. But I think this just signifies the battle lines. They're going into overdrive. They have nothing to lose. They're cornered. Humanity's waking up. I, uh, this is just an epic time to be alive. But what do you think Hillary's going to do if she actually gets in? My bigger concern isn't that she'll just persecute us. We know that's coming. That's already happened. I've already been under Bill and Hillary before and enjoyed it, let me tell you. It's always fun to get knocked upside the head by a bunch of thugs attacking you, saying, don't talk about the Clintons as they punch you. Uh, but I punched back. That's what they found out. So I guess they didn't come back. <laughs> as they thought. But side issue, Paul, what do you think she's going to do when she gets in? I think she might start World War III because this, 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 this instinct to dominate and rule everyone, uh, this megalomania in her is so strong. I mean, the dark side is strong in this one. No, I mean, that is the fear that she could amp up this Cold War situation with Russia. We've got By the way, China. the Russians say that. They say she may be the worst president ever. They absolutely, in their analysis, think Hillary is, is like the freaking Antichrist. Oh, no. I mean, Putin said words to that effect a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, he, he said he could probably get along with Trump, but Hillary is just a frightening prospect. You've got the South China Sea situation with, you know, China saying that it's not afraid of a military confrontation once again. So she could, she could, could exploit that. The country's going to be massively divided if she gets in. She could rally everyone around by using the old exactly. exclusive. Role. How are the Chinese going to act when she's on their payroll on record? And because Kenneth Starr was on the payroll of the same group, he never went after her for that, special prosecutor. How are, she, how are they going to act knowing that she's been basically a communist Chinese agent for 20 years? Well, she's going to get protected by the media, so it's not even going to be a big issue. I mean, you've got the media flapping their gums about Trump tweeting a star in a Hillary Clinton meeting. By the way, that's one of the four or five stars they use when they say like discount on a you know on a box, a cereal box. Exactly. And so, well, 
it was seen on a white supremacist website. Well, you know, my videos are posted on white supremacist websites, but white supremacists and neo-Nazis are the prominent people who attack me. Just the because point is that speaks. symbol, the way they did it orange like that or whatever, is the symbol that the police use, everybody else uses. It just means look here. Yeah, totally, totally innocent. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia, the country that executes gay people and throws them in prison, is funding 20% of Hillary Clinton's campaign. Nobody gives a damn about that. That's not offensive. What's offensive is a red star in a meme about Hillary Clinton. My God, I'm so offended. Well, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And they're going to try these stunts over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, the left gets mad at us putting out this Ben Garrison deal. He exposed Bush, by the way, with I'm with her. The, the Grim Reaper with Hillary showing Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya. And they say, oh, you didn't care about Bush. Yes, we did. And we were against those wars. But even mainline historians say Hillary's far worse and Obama at launching a whole bunch of new wars. And they're financing anti-Christian groups that are killing hundreds of thousands of Christians. I mean, Bush didn't do that. Bush protected Christians in Iraq as bad as he is. It's like, why do you think she's out to get Christians like this? I just can't figure it out. Well, it, I mean, it's the policy of the administration, the Syrian refugees they've brought in. It's literally, you know, 99.5% Muslim, even though Syria, if you were doing it on that basis, you know, around 10% would be Christian just about on 20. a neutral basis. about 20. I guess half yeah, of left. Yeah, it's closer to 20. So you've got the guy involved in the Istanbul bombing being a refugee protected by the EU. Now the U.S. is importing these people, and they seem to be deliberately importing Muslims over Christians while refusing to even mention the term Islamic terrorism. So, you know, it's Well, by the way, well I mean, if that. I see some guy in one of these Santa Claus outfits refusing a blind person a ride because they got a seeing eye dog, I'm going to get mad. At a certain point, you know, once we get enough Muslims in the country, they start blowing stuff up to make us submit to them. I, I, but, but again, the leftists hate America so much, they love it, man. God almighty, I can... The spoiled brats, Paul. Well, you shot no, a video about America, greatest country in history. It has been the greatest country in history. Doesn't mean we're not mad at a bunch of stuff that's gone on, but 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 we don't just have it out for the country. No, and, the, and the all these is... people that hate it, man, get your asses out. Get the hell out. I'm sorry. I mean, I think one more slack jawed, white yuppie, 25 year old with a thousand dollar, you know, fancy iPhone pulling up in a fancy car their parents gave them in a Mercedes. Wearing a Bernie Sanders shirt, I mean, I just, I just cannot handle it, man. You know how many people I see driving around in fancy cars with Bernie Sanders stickers, Paul? I mean, I have no, had it this... with it. communist countries and socialist countries can't even manufacture cars, dumbass. Look at Cuba, dumbass. They can't make a car, you stupid idiots. Look at North Korea. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Look at Venezuela. They have to have signs on the truck saying there's no food in it, so it doesn't get looted. I mean. Fantastic, again, benefits of socialism. But the left has aligned with Islamists because, as you said, they both hate America. This is not just a cliche, it's true. This is why ISIS in its own manifestos say that we're going to go out and hire leftists, radicalize them, and give them weapons because we broadly share the same goal. And that goal is to tear down the existing structure. Whether it's good or bad, it's to tear down the status quo. That means your constitutional rights in the process. And I got news this for is... you. The only structure that works is free market dummies. We lose this, the carrying capacity falls. We're going to have billions that starve it as you morons. That's what they want to remove. It goes back to the Frankfurt School, which of course created political correctness. It goes back to Marxism. It goes back to this idea of critical theory and Saul Alinsky, where they just want to tear down absolutely everything in this kind of nihilist purge. And socialists want to do that, so do Islamists. That's why they feed off of each other. That's why socialists and liberals defend Islamists, because, again, they broadly share the same goals. And now ISIS has actually recognized this and is going out and trying to hire these people. Wow, I mean, I knew that was... Well, there's the headline. ISIS admits alliance with the left. Uh, uh, wow, is there a story on this? This is sensational. Yeah, I mean... I wrote the story months ago, and this is all... Well, let's put it out again. I, the people need to know this, because I'm telling you, man... Here's the deal. Disliking problems in America and crony capitalism is good and should be done. But I'm telling you, socialists and globalists are going to deliver us into hell. They are not the answer to reforming the West even more.
We want to get better, not go back to this. No, exactly. And the, the other issue with this election coming up, again, they could get some radical leftists. We've, we've already seen people jumping up on the stage trying to attack Trump. We've seen a, an assassination attempt against Trump just a few weeks ago. Got barely any media attention whatsoever. This guy tries to grab an officer's gun, go up and shoot Trump in the head. The story was buried within 48 hours. If someone did that at a, you know, a Hillary event, it would be in the news for three weeks. Dangerous right-wing radical uh, Republicans trying to kill Hillary Clinton. Trump has had numerous ass assassination attempts. That's why he wears a bulletproof vest at every public event. That's why he doesn't button his, his uh, suit top up. And again, the media doesn't talk about it. The other issue that's bubbling under the surface, which I'm gonna write an article about, is Facebook, there's now speculation from experts that Facebook is gonna manipulate their feed, their algorithm, on the day of the election to encourage certain people within Democratic districts to go out and vote. Because of course there are, you know, if there's a low turnout, they need to encourage that. They're now powerful enough, and we've covered the stories before, Facebook has done tests, studies, experiments on the general public to manipulate their emotions. Facebook is now more powerful than a lot of countries, even in the Western world. And Zuckerberg they're, is the dictator of it. And they're talking about using that algorithm to manipulate people on the day of the presidential election to go out and vote for Hillary Clinton. This is not me saying it, this is a top author, an expert, so we're gonna have that story coming up All as right. well. I want to go to two calls that have been holding super long. I hand the baton to you, Paul Watson. All I can say is, folks, you want to be part of history. Spread the video and audio links today. Spread the link to Infowars.com forward slash show. Support our local stations. Thank them for carrying the show. It's your support that ends up getting us moved from the weekend to weeknights to live. Most stations end up moving us to live because they get the support, the ratings, and things they need. We're winning in the info war. The globalists want to overthrow that because they can't beat us fair and square. So. Don't take the show for granted. I tell myself that every night when I go to bed, and every day when I get up, work hard today, be as absolutely hardcore as you can, bust your ass, Jones, don't play games. This is history. You're betting your life, your treasure, your sacred honor on this. You better kick butt, okay? I mean, I am in my face every day like a drill sergeant. And all I'm asking you is to realize this is history happening right now. This isn't a game. And we will beat these people as our ancestors have beaten parasites and collectivists before. But it's going to be rough. And, the, and, and if we don't fight hard, folks, it's going to get really bad before it gets better. Because they'll always destroy themselves in the end. But my God, with the weapons we've got and things like that now, we do not want to go down this road. This is historic. This is dangerous. But we're winning major battles. We're starting to win the war. Look at the British situation and the Brexit. All I'm saying is spread the word about the broadcast today. Send those links out. The power of you, the activists of this transmission. You're the reason it's spreading so fast already. And the great team we've got. It, it works together like a horse and carriage. But you are 99% of the power. We're just the detonator. You are the explosive. Infowars is the detonator. You are the explosive. And then you're also the detonator to detonate the explosive in your area. So you're the explosive and the detonator. You are everything. And we need you to detonate information warfare weapons of truth in your area. People are ready to hear the truth. We need you to detonate. If you're an engineer and have the skills and there's no local affiliate, micro FM, AM, UHF, VHF, don't play games. Whatever you got to do, folks, this isn't, the, we're not playing around. We got to get hardcore. I launched a movement of micro FMs back in the mid 90s that I know got thousands of stations put up. So we're ready. We're ready to fight the info war because that's affecting the future battle space. That's almost all of war today, the Pentagon says is informational. The average person at the Pentagon is awake rooting for us, but commanded by enemy globalists. Literally. This is historic, what's happening. You are the resistance. This, that isn't some rhetoric, you know, like, oh, I'm the resistance, you know. Oh, you're beginning to see, this is real. When I say from deep behind enemy lines and occupied North America, I'm not playing around. Lana in North Carolina, thanks for holding her on the air with Paul Watson and myself. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, it's such a privilege to um, talk to you. And uh, I love all the journalists, and I forward all of your articles you. on Instagram, and uh, I tell people about Tragedy and Hope 101. Um, but what I wanted to ask you, you and uh, your journalists were t uh, touching on it a minute ago, um, 
it's so stupid for the globalists to tear us down, and I know they're really smart, but what I don't understand is why are they doing that? Because once they do that, they're not going to have anybody to uh, buy all of their luxury items, like their BMW. Sure, you know, sure, sure. That's only one division of what they've done. It's a great point. In fact, this, this is the key to everything we've just asked. They have bad will towards you. Elites don't like, even if they're worth $100 billion, they don't like you with a nice swimming pool, going on nice vacations. They go to the Grand Canyon and see you there. They write books about it and complain. Why are there all these proletariats out here? You know, they've got too high a standard of living. That's why Obama says you can't have an air conditioning or a car. They, they don't want nice things for themselves. They want to restrict things to you. They want control. They're control freaks. And so they're trying to get... All of the and, and there's an extremism to commercialism and stuff. They use that to control people. You know, th they hit it from both angles. Uh, they're destroying it while they build it. But they're trying to basically phase all that out now and have a post-industrial world. Paul, can you speak to that paradox? Yeah, well, I mean, you saw it with the Brexit result. You know, the people in London, the middle classes who are wannabe elitists, they all rally around the elitists. The elitists have their low-income servants that drag everybody else's wages down and it's to hell with the rest of the country you know the vast majority of people who voted for brexit were outside of london the people of london 30 to 70 percent voted for it so it's this city-centric view where as long as they have this support network of you know marginally middle class people who just want to be part of the establishment that's why they support it and then these low income basically slaves who do all the work for them they're happy with that and it's to hell with everybody else in a free market capitalist system, everybody benefits, the whole country benefits, the wealth isn't sucked into a few that's major right, That's cities. right, that's right. The elites can't handle an open free society based on free will and a free association because they can't create a global dictatorship. They want a technocracy where they get the life extension technologies and everything for themselves and we don't get any of it. They're worried about us getting next level technologies that will free everyone, okay? And because once we get off the planet, their monopoly's over, okay? So they're literally trying to control the future. This is a total power grab of the entire species. Does exactly. that make sense? I mean, if, 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 you're, if you're Kim Jong-un or if you're in his staff and you live in Pyongyang, then you've got a very high quality of life. Meanwhile, half a mile away, there are people starving on the streets. They're perfectly happy for the world to be like that. I mean, yeah, they do the... it on purpose. They don't exactly. produce cars because they don't want you to know they even hardly exist. Thank you, Lonnie. Stormy can get a call from Paul, but I'm handing the baton to Paul Watson. Support the broadcast. Spread the word. The war is now. Spread the word the now. The, the revolution against tyranny run. is now. We are back on the fourth hour live overdrive of the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to get to some other news from Europe in a little while because obviously Alex has covered this Hillary Clinton email scandal fallout. Basically, Many pundits, many commentators are saying that this is the most breathtaking fix in American political history. You had the FBI director, Comey, get up there, lay out in detail in a 15, 20 minute disquisition how Hillary Clinton broke the law, only to conclude that Hillary Clinton is above the law, period. Final confirmation as if it were needed that America is a banana republic. And the outrage, the reaction, the backlash from this continues. Here's some of the feedback that we've seen. Here's Dinesh D'Souza. If reports are accurate that James Comey won't indict, which of course it turned out they were, how that'll encourage these Clinton gangsters to continue their crime spree. And that's the point, isn't it? This is only going to embolden the Clinton crime family. We saw the sheer chutzpah, the brazen arrogance of Bill Clinton meeting with Loretta Lynch on the tarmac, tarmac there at Phoenix Airport. And again, many commentators said, why did he do that? Well, because he could. Because he's a gangster, he's a criminal, and he's not afraid to show it. Again, meeting with Loretta Lynch, the person responsible for investigating Hillary Clinton, but they just talked about golf and grandchildren, and you can trust them. Then Hillary Clinton afterwards saying, oh yeah, Loretta Lynch may have a place within my future administration. <laughs> Again, the absolute brazen chutzpah of merely suggesting that when she's the person, even though she half recused herself, who is going to have the final say on this indictment. Now, of course, Comey has come out and taken the fall, whether he was threatened or not. Some people are speculating he was. 
But again, that takes the heat off Loretta Lynch. Now everybody's expecting it to come to nothing. She can quietly slip into the Hillary White House, no questions asked. Absolutely breathtaking. Here's some more reaction. Ari Fleischer, former White House press secretary, if Hillary were still Secretary of State, President Obama would have to fire her. But instead, he travels with her and seeks to promote her. Disgusting. So again, the timing. Obama, immediately after this Comey press conference, is on the campaign trail with, with Hillary Clinton. The timing is absolutely perfect. Here's Jan Brewer, former Arizona governor. What I got from FBI Director Comey's remarks Hillary Clinton's recklessness makes her unfit to be president. And again, you've had Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail constantly invoke this narrative that Donald Trump is reckless with national security. <laughs> After she's mishandling these national security issues on a daily basis with her email, that point now is completely null and void. And this is what may play in Trump's favor as we go forward, despite the fact that Hillary's not going to be indicted. The sheer amount of material that came out of this uh, Comey press conference today, is Trump is going to run on that for months and months to come. Let's go to this Fox News clip on that subject, analyzing how this will affect the presidential race with Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. Here's the clip. Um, so first of all, I, th I believe that interview was uh, on the phone, obviously, yeah. and only five minutes was allowed, which I, I think at, you know, at this point, that that is like everything here. Uh, it seems very concocted to protect her. And boy, would I like her to be doing well right now. But Mark Halperin, uh, tell me what what you see in this. Are they trying? Yeah, we need we need to go to the Fox News clip. This is Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. Let me know if you have that clip because he's talking about how this will affect Trump, how Trump will be able to exploit this, how it will change the conversation. We'll go to that clip soon anyway. More feedback, though, more uh, remarks coming out as a result of this non-indictment of Hillary Clinton. This is Sean Parnell, co-founder of American Warrior Initiative. He says it's official. We're a banana republic, one where high-ranking officials aren't subject to the law. Harry Shearer. Again, by no means a right-wing Republican, he's a left-winger. He says there's a great recommendation for president, quote, extremely careless. And again, that's what FBI Director Comey said, that she was, quote, extremely careless with national security material. In eight cases, top secret classified material, she was, quote, extremely careless, and yet somehow that doesn't equate to negligence. We talk about precedent. I mean, Comey alluded to it. He said, listen, some people in the past, some people in the future, to paraphrase him, you know, they will face punishment for the exact same thing that Hillary Clinton did. But Hillary Clinton won't. What's the only determination? What's the only conclusion you can draw for that? Well, it's the fact that Hillary Clinton is above the law. But we go back to December 1996. John Deutsch resigned from the FBI after it was discovered that he had stored highly classified documents on his home computer, which was connected to the Internet. After a criminal investigation, Deutsch agreed to plead guilty to a misdemeanor and pay a $5,000 fine. But wait for it. How did he get off? Before the prosecutors could file the papers in federal court, President Bill Clinton pardoned him on his last day in office. So again, the exact same scenario, mishandling classified documents on his home computer. He was guilty. He had to plead guilty to a misdemeanor and pay a $5,000 fine. He was pardoned by President Bill Clinton. David Petraeus. Again, this is an ABC News report from when this happened. Petraeus has entered into an agreement with federal prosecutors in which he would plead guilty to a misdemeanor charge for mishandling classified information. The charge unauthorized removal and retention of classified material stems in part from documents the former director allegedly provided to his mistress. So again, in fact, he was up for a higher degree charge before he pled guilty to a misdemeanor. The fact is that he had to plead guilty because he was mishandling classified information. 
Here's another example. This is on the FBI's own website from less than a year ago, July 29, 2015. Folsom Naval Reservist is sentenced after pleading guilty to unauthorized removal and retention of classified materials. This is Brian H. Nishimura, who pleaded guilty to unauthorized removal and retention of classified materials. U.S. Magistrate Judge Kendall J. Newman immediately sentenced Nishimura to two years of probation, the $7,500 fine, and forfeiture of personal media containing classified materials. Nishimura was further ordered to surrender any currently held security clearance and to never again seek such a clearance. So his security clearance was completely revoked. He could never seek it again. And yet Hillary Clinton, who did exactly the same thing, is going to have the highest security clearance imaginable for that position if she becomes president. Again, this article from the FBI's own website, Sacramento Division, continues. According to court documents, Nishimura was a naval reservist deployed in Afghanistan in 2007 and 2008. In his role as a regional engineer for the U.S. military in Afghanistan, Nishimura had access to classified briefings and digital records that could only be retained and viewed on authorized government computers. Nishimura, however, caused the materials to be downloaded and stored on his personal, unclassified electronic devices and storage media. He carried such classified materials, materials on his unauthorized media when he traveled off base in Afghanistan and ultimately carried those materials back to the United States at the end of his deployment, just as Hillary Clinton was sending those emails when she was in Russia and China. So you see, again, in this case, it was not a deliberate intent, you know, to give out classified materials to hostile powers, to foreign powers or hostile agents. It was merely the fact that he mishandled the classified information. He was sentenced. $7,500 fine, two years of probation. The exact same scenario, but his last name was not Clinton. And that's the standard right now for being above the law. Now, let's get into the law a little bit more. In fact, I think we've got that clip now. Again, this is a Republican strategist, Brad Blakeman, on Fox News, talking about how this fallout will affect the presidential election. Here's that clip. Some quotes, Brad, from the, attorney, uh, the FBI director's statements. There is evidence they, meaning Hillary and her staff, were extremely careless in their handling of classified info. There is evidence that any reasonable person in Clinton's position should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that information. Um, pretty damning words for the, the, the person who wants to be the next president of the United States. There's no doubt about it. Uh, this may be a victory for Hillary Clinton, but it's a defeat for American justice. Uh, one thing is for sure, John, while Hillary may never be tried in a court of law, she is going to be tried in the court of public opinion. And it's going to be up to Donald Trump to be the prosecutor. The American people are going to be the jury. The electorate is going to go determine whether or not Hillary Clinton is capable of being the president of the United States in view of her recklessness with regard to the handling and dissemination of the most sensitive American secrets. Anybody else but Hillary Clinton would have been indicted. There's no question about it. Because she's Hillary Clinton, she got a pass. The question is, will the American people give her one too? And that's the point, isn't it? You know, will this beef the crooked Hillary meme even more in a year, 2016, which has seen a complete revolt against the status quo, especially after the Brexit vote. Can Trump play on those concerns? Will this beef the view, will this beef the narrative that things are completely out of control, that Hillary Clinton is above the law, that she represents this establishment that's so hated? You know, she's trying to back away from that image now by you know, saying she won't support TPP and things like this because she knows that that is toxic to be associated with this discredited establishment. So this could backfire on Hillary, despite the fact that it's a victory right now. Trump is going to get a lot of gas mileage out of this scandal because, again, he's going to make the point that crooked Hillary was protected by 
an administration by a federal government that has placed her above the law. This is Guy Benson, town hall political editor. She mishandled top secret classified material in an extremely careless manner, which is not grossly negligent, apparently. Again, as I said, they laid out the fact that it, it was extremely careless. She broke the law, and we're going to go through the law in a second, but somehow that doesn't equate to gross negligence. Brazenly telling the American people that Hillary Clinton is above the law. Now, there's a Ben Shapiro article on Daily Wire. It's uh, FBI, yes, Queen Hillary broke the law. No, she won't be prosecuted. And this really drills down, gets into the specific laws that have been broken. On July 4, 1776, the United States announced its independence from Great Britain based on the key principle of rule of law. On July 5, 2016, the United States said, F it, I'm with Hillary. Just days after the Attorney General of the United States, Loretta Lynch, held a secret meeting aboard a plane with former President Bill Clinton, whose wife was under an FBI investigation, just the day after Hillary leaked that she'd want Lynch for her own administration, just hours after the President of the United States, Barack Obama, flew Hillary, still under FBI investigation, down to North Carolina on Air Force One, and just two hours before Obama was to open his campaign on behalf of Hillary Clinton, FBI Director James Comey announced that while Hillary Clinton had clearly engaged in criminal activity worthy of prosecution, he had recommended that she not be prosecuted. Because of course he did. Here are Comey's findings which demonstrate full violation of multiple provisions of federal law. And you can go through this article and read them for yourself. So Hillary lied. She lied that she never transmitted classified information. She lied that she only used a private server because she wanted one device. She lied that the State Department allowed her to jerry-rig this technological setup. She lied that the emails were never breached. But according to Comey, no biggie. Now, Comey essentially admitted that Hillary violated federal law, and here's his quote. Our investigation looked at whether there is evidence classified information was improperly stored or transmitted on that personal system in violation of a federal statute making it a felony to mishandle classified information either intentionally or in a grossly negligent way, or a second statute making it a misdemeanor, misdemeanor to knowingly remove classified information from appropriate systems or storage facilities. And Comey stated that the FBI had, quote, investigated to determine whether there is evidence of computer intrusion in connection with the personal email server by er any foreign power or other ho hostile actors. Now, remember, Guccifer, the Romanian hacker, said, went on record, he's now in a prison, that he personally hacked into Hillary Clinton's email server. But, of course, Comey said that because there was no trace that they couldn't go after her on that basis. Of course, you're not going to leave a trace via the method that he said he did it. How he did it on previous occasions, hacked into other people's emails accounts, he simply guessed the password. So there was no actual hostile attempt to hack into the server. There was no trace left because he merely guessed the password. He publicly said he did the same, went through the same process with Hillary Clinton's private email server. But again, Comey didn't even mention that. The article continues, but no matter, the law doesn't apply to Hillary Clinton, as Comey said. Quote, to be clear, this is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. To the contrary, those individuals are often subject to security or administrative sanctions, but that is not what we're deciding now. And as I laid out with the three previous examples, and there are many more, they not only faced administrative actions, they faced, in one case, two years probation. Again, the soldier out of Afghanistan who I talked about, Nishimura. Again, mishandling classified information, downloading it onto his own personal device, transporting it around exactly as Hillary Clinton did. He was hit with a $7,500 fine and two years probation. David Petraeus, similar circumstances. A Deutsch, the former FBI director, similar circumstances, he got a pardon from Clinton. But again, they were punished.
So Comey's right when he says, you know, other people in, under similar circumstances were punished in the past, in the past and will be in the future, but not Hillary Clinton. What else are we to conclude from that other than the fact that Hillary Clinton is above the law and the United States is a banana republic? We'll be back with the final segment of the Alex Jones Show Live, covering news from Europe after the break. Breaking news at Infowars.com. We're back. It's the final segment of the Alex Jones Show on this Tuesday edition. Now, ISIS members are once again bragging about how they can exploit Europe's borders, which are basically like sibs right now. This is out of Politico.eu. Man in the hat claims terror cells in Paris and Brussels part of larger network. And one of the uh, ISIS terrorists they quote in the article said that the terror cell moved freely through Europe. He said, quote, you know, an international arrest warrant to be sought by the police, that doesn't change anything. I passed every day in front of soldiers, policemen, not with a covered face, but with a cap. He added, quote, security at the borders can never protect anyone. It's just the politicians who want to delude people that they protect them. But there is usually no security. It has never been real. And again, that is why ISIS in their own manifesto brags about how they exploited the refugee program to infiltrate jihadists into Europe. We saw another example of that with the Istanbul airport attack, where the mastermind was a refugee protected by the EU. He was being arrested with Kalashnikovs and explosives in his car in Sweden. They put him in jail for a year because Sweden's a liberal basket case hellhole. Russia tried to extradite this guy on two separate occasions to charge him with terrorism, and the EU protected him because he was a precious refugee, later becoming the mastermind of the bloody Istanbul airport attack. They're laughing at us every single day. They're laughing at us because we just invite them right on in. Now, with regard to the Brexit, this is out of Sky News. Branson and May meet as Tycoon demands new poll. So basically the favourite to become the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom after the resignation of David Cameron is having secret meetings with Richard Branson, who is openly calling for democracy to be subverted and for there to be a second referendum on Brexit. So this supposedly conservative next Prime Minister, who isn't conservative at all, she's a globalist, She's the one who said that Sharia law was good for women in the United Kingdom, secretly meeting with a billionaire who wants to subvert democracy. Here's another article from Infowars.com. Dumb zombie Americans think the US is 2016 years old. Yes, they actually thought that Independence Day celebrating the birthday of America meant that America was 2016 years old because it's the year 2016. Never underestimate the stupidity of the general public. And again, you saw it with a new Mark Dice video. They don't know how many stars are on the American flag. They don't know anything about US history because now as a separate report notes, only 23 undergraduate history programs at 76 top universities require any type of US history course. But of course, many of them now require gender studies and all kinds of feminist, identity politics, social justice warrior crap. So that's why the general public continues to be completely misinformed. German police report confirmed surge in child rapes by migrants in swimming pools and admits we have grave cause for concern. Yes, this is the racist German government once again with their racist statistics. Here's a quote from the article. Talking about children being sexually abused at swimming pools by migrants. Quote, the perpetrators are, for the most part, immigrants. That's the German government saying that it's not Pegida, it's not radical right-wing racists. So what are you going to do when the facts continue to show this? Well, just denounce the facts as racist. And again, continue to import millions and millions of people who are completely incompatible with Western society and destroy the fabric of Western civilization. That's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Alex Jones Show in Wars Nightly News coming up. Alex will be back 11 to 2 tomorrow. Look out for that big Facebook rigging the election article on Infowars.com. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>